Hi, good morning, it's me, Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. Oh, I'm so excited to finally be covering a Blue Origin launch. Oh, this is a, this is a first for me. Um, I'm a big fan of Blue Origin and their new Glenn, our new Shepard rocket and the little new Shepard capsule. Uh, this is actually going to be their first, or this is their second time launching this booster in this capsule. Um, this is their NS3, so New Shepard 3. It's the third launch vehicle they have. Uh, they lost their very first one on uh, the first time they tried to launch it a couple years ago. Um, it ran out of hydraulic fluid, lost control, and crashed. The second booster uh, had massive success, flew, I believe, five times, uh, and was absolutely flawless that booster was incredible uh i love this thing it's a sub this is a suborbital booster so it only goes up its main purpose is to to deliver um people and a little bit of experiments up to the carmen line so 62 two miles or 100 kilometers in altitude just barely kisses the edge of space and falls back down the whole thing takes only 10 to 12 minutes or so um you'll experience about four minutes of weightlessness so this is uh, this is not a you know an orbital class booster. This is just a suborbital tourism thing. But don't discount that. This thing is amazing. It self lands. It actually was technically the first vehicle to do propulsive liquid fueled landing um, after reaching space. And we can argue all day long about orbital mechanics. You know, going four thousand miles an hour versus zero static horizontal velocity. I don't care, this thing's still amazing. This is a really cool high-tech piece of machinery and a lot of what they're doing with uh, New Shepard directly correlates to when they have New Glenn um, coming out. So I'm really excited about this. Again, this is this is actually their first launch of 2018. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. I love it. Um, <laughs> also, thank you, Riley, and hello, good morning. Blue Origin, more like Blue Borigen. Come on, no, no, this is exciting, guys. Anything like this is great. Uh, in my opinion, the more the merrier. Um, Blue Origin is really exciting to me. They're definitely very secretive about what they're doing, um, about their progress. They really don't let us in on much, which is fine. They don't have to do that. Um, but I think what's going to happen is all of a sudden we're just going to get pff, smacked in the face. Kind of like when they landed their first new Shepard. We didn't know about it until it happened. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, by the way, we did this incredible thing that no one else has done before. And we did it like two days ago. So here's a video of it. Um, so don't be surprised when, um, when all of a sudden someday they're like, oh, by the way, here's our new Glenn booster. It's done and we're going to test it tomorrow. Or, or we tested it. Like, we're going to test it in five minutes. You'll know when they're going to, like, fly the New Glenn because they have to, you know, file a lot of permits to fly and stuff. And we'll probably see it roll out of that massive factory out there uh, in Cape Canaveral. But, that being said, yeah, guys, it's not an us versus them. You don't have to choose one or the other. Um, you just get to be excited about everything. That's my attitude, at least. So, uh, I, I invite you to join me in that. Um, we're all in this together, so... We don't have to say anything, and it's not always a race. So, um, hi, good morning. I'm so excited to be back, guys. Um, I'm sorry that the I had missed uh, two SpaceX launches and a, and like an Atlas V launch and a few other things when I was gone the past month. Uh, we can finally talk about it now. For over a year, I've been working on a new series on an actual proper uh, like scripted real series uh with a production crew and everything and the whole nine yards um and last year i actually sold that series to facebook and now uh facebook watch which is their original programming kind of like you know youtube red or hulu or netflix when they produce content uh this is like that so i have a show called spacing out uh with the everyday astronaut we partnered with space.com and we produce five episodes, and it airs next Friday already. Um, you, I don't even think you have to be a member of Facebook, so hold your opinions about um, Facebook, whether or not you agree with things lately, but I'm really excited still about Facebook Watch. It's a great platform. You can watch it on your Apple TV, your phones, your computer, whatever you want. It's free, um, and that doesn't change anything about what I'm doing here on YouTube at all. I'm still obviously... Um, doing everything, I, actually I have, I'll be launching two of my longest videos ever back to back here this week. Um, today probably for one, and then another one probably Wednesday or Thursday. So get ready for that, it's going to be, I think those are going to be great. 
but I'm really excited about it. So I hope that you guys are excited. Um, like I said, it just it's bonus material for you guys. If you if you missed me and want more ridiculousness, this is the normally you just see me in my room uh, doing silly dumb things here. This is me actually going out doing ridiculous experiments um, with people like Amy Shira Title from Vintage Space. Um, uh, another Facebook watch host named Olivia Pavko Giaccia, uh, also joined my friend Ben Steinman helped me, uh, build something ridiculous that you guys are going to see. We made, we made hovercrafts at one point. We, we launched rockets from drones. It's ridiculous. Um, I had a lot of fun. We were all over the United States shooting. Um, I'm really excited for you guys to see it. So enough about that. Um, liftoff got delayed again. Is that what you guys just said? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> if that's the case, I'm going to be sad, and I don't know what I'm going to do for the whole time. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. E oh, gosh, yeah. Guys, it got delayed again. <laughs> Why? No! Uh, I'll probably just have to pop up again, guys. I, I, I want to get this video. Oh, also, hi, Richard. Pushing boundaries is always good. New engines, new rockets, new engineering. Absolutely. 100% agree. And thank you for the tip and good morning. So, um, it got delayed by another uh, hour, basically. Well, hi there, Mackenzie Tulip. Uh, thank you so much for your work. Whenever friends ask about space, I send them your way. That's great. Thank you. Um, that's what I'm here for. I'm just excited about this stuff, and I hope that I can explain it in a way that people also can understand and, and hopefully... Um, make it easy for them because it's kind of complicated stuff sometimes. So thank you. Oh, Max. Hello, Tim. This is Max and Andres. Is, uh, and Max and Andres, biggest fan of your transmissions. Well, thank you, Max. And thank you for the tip. That means a lot. Thank you, guys. Um, I will be covering the InSight Mars Lander launch, which I got to go in the clean room and see Mars InSight Lander. You'll see that in my um, first episode of Spacing Out. We actually go and we went in the clean room to see Mars Insight Lander. It was amazing. Uh, so again, I'm really excited about that. But I have a lot. We have a lot of stuff to be excited about. So um, there's a ton of stuff coming out, guys. You're gonna see too much content from me in the next like week or two. So just get ready for that. So yeah, <laughs> KSP or Riot. I think personally. I would rather me end this transmission, I can keep working on the video so you guys can get that new video today. Um, this video is NASA versus SpaceX, so um, it's a really, 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 really in-depth topic. It's a long video. This The first half, not even comparing the rockets, just kind of laying the groundwork, is almost 20 minutes long. So I did break it up into two videos. I have the other one shot already, so don't worry. This means that the second half will be coming out almost immediately, unlike my other times. I'm like, I'm going to do a series, and I do one, and then five months later I do part two, and I have yet to do part three. Uh, this one will actually come out back-to-back -back really quickly, um, but I, I just felt like it was appropriate to break it up into two because otherwise it would have been like 40 minutes long. And I just that's just too long. That's too long. Um... I, I fear even with good retention rate, that's just too intimidating. People don't want to watch a 40 minute long video, I don't think. I'd rather have two options. If people just want to learn about this and just learn about this, they can do that and or they can cross pollinate. So, Also, hi there, uh, Andre. Thank you. So excited for my series debuting on Star Wars Day. Me too. May the 4th be with you. I'll be doing a Reddit AMA, guys, by the way, um, on May 4th, uh, the day the show premieres. So come say hi, ask questions there. Um, I'll be with the editors of space.com as well. It'll be awesome. So, yeah. Um, thank you very much. Hank, thank you also for your generous tip. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Lucas, hi. Do you like SpaceX or NASA? Well, guess what? Uh, you'll find out here literally today. And we'll go through that whole thing. Sorry, I think my cat is um, pawing at the door because what else do cats do? Uh, the AMA will be on Reddit. It'll be on the default IAMA. We already have a... We're in the calendar, so go check it out. Reddit.com slash r slash IAMA. You will find us there. They've already got a link there. 2 p.m. Uh, local time for me, at least. Central. Um, yeah. This is official stuff, guys. I, I don't... I hope I'm not, like, 
coming off arrogantly here, but this is not, this is a, this was a big deal for me, uh, producing this content. Um, it's, you know, with a real production crew of like 10 people helping make this happen that have like walkie talkies and stuff in their ears. Like this was really legit and it was very different from what I'm doing here in my house. This is totally different, totally different. I'm really excited about it. It was a lot of fun. Um, I think you guys are going to have um, <laughs> a lot of fun with this. So um, I think, guys, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and cut this transmission today just for now. I will be back in literally 45 minutes. So just be patient. I'd rather, I'd rather start over. I'd rather keep working on this video for you guys. I want this thing out as soon as possible. I'm actually done. I have to export it. I don't really want to do that while we're live streaming. Actually, you know what? I have a new computer. I'm going to see what happens. We're just going to test this out. Let's try just exporting a, a Premiere 4K video live on the internet and see what you guys think. Actually, I'm going to screen share. Let's let's all watch this together. Let's watch potential fail here together. All right. NASA versus SpaceX. Um, is that fair one? Here we go. Save. Export. See if it craps his pants. I don't think it will, actually. I think we've got... All the CPU power in the world with a 10 core with turbo boost of 4.5 gigahertz, 64 gigs of RAM. But if the stream crashes, this is why. Because I'm also live exporting <laughs> a, four, a 20 minute long 4K video. Oh man. And look at that. No problem. CPU. Oh, you guys can't even see that. Let me move my little thing. This now is the Watch Tim Dodd edit things live stream dot live stream so cpu not even a problem memory why did that pop over there Pfft, we still have like 20 gigs of memory okay we're fine i'll stick around for a little bit all right why don't you guys um <laughs> you stitch 6k 360 videos i've done 8k 360 as well um yes the electricity bills all right, so yes, no launch yet it is. Um, <laughs> I'm glad the Discord channel seems to have really appreciated the screen share of exporting. Uh, we <laughs> we might as well just call this yeah the paint dr watching paint dry with Tim Dodd the everyday astronaut. So basically, um, ooh, capsules or lifting bodies? That's a good. Qu I like this. This is going to be a fun live stream. Capsules or lifting bodies from Jin Chan's odd jobs. I Jin Chan, I'm. Always happy to see your name. Um, I like both. It just depends. Um, lifting bodies, the only thing I don't like about lifting bodies is... Um, a lifting body, by the way, is something like a space shuttle. Um, or like the X-37B, which is that little secretive mini space shuttle that Boeing makes for the Air Force. There's also the Dream Chaser by Sierra Nevada. Um, isn't it weird we say Nevada, but not... Nev and then for that, like Sierra Nevada, and then Nevada when you're talking about the state. Maybe I just do. Maybe that's just me. Um, anyway, uh, lifting bodies, the problem is you carry the aerodynamic surfaces into space. And in space, there's no aerodynamics to deal with. So all those aerodynamic surfaces are pointless. And you're just carrying around extra mass anytime you have to do any maneuver. Uh, so say you're trying to send something out to the moon. You're carrying around hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kilograms or double that in pounds of extra weight that's doing nothing for you out there in space. Um, but it is cool. I think I like the idea of, you know, basically flying back in from space. But at the same time, capsules are super reliable and very safe and no big deal. So, yeah. Um, the X-37 and shuttle are both, by definition, lifting bodies. Um but the and and actually, I just had this uh, a pedantic argument with somebody um, about if the X thirty seven was a uh, a Delta wing or not. It actually wasn't listed on their on their uh, description as a Delta wing, but just as a lifting body. But really, Delta wing just means that Delta symbol, that triangle. That means that's Delta. So any wing that's triangular shaped could be considered a Delta wing. Um, hence, why the BFS, the Big Falcon ship, the upper portion of the BFR. Big Falcon rocket by SpaceX. Um, that they do have a little tiny delta wing on it. The main reason they do that is uh, here. Let's pick up the old. 
Okay, so the space shuttle is a perfect example. So pretend this is a the BFS. The reason there's gonna has to be wings down here is there's there's seven big engines on the bottom of the BFS. There will be four that are vacuum optimized. They're they only really work in a va in a vacuum. You can't really use those at sea level due to um, combustion instability and overexpanded nozzles. That's something we'll get into in a future video. But then it also the VFS will also have three sea level optimized engines, uh, mostly for landing. And it sounds like they actually put a third one in there specifically for redundancy and safety. So here's the deal. That's the center. So those heavy engines are going to be the center of mass, or really close to the heaviest point of the vehicle. And when the vehicle comes in uh, anywhere, as soon as, it, especially as soon as it hits atmosphere, um, it's going to want to go heavy end first. And that's not necessarily a good thing. So in order to balance that out aerodynamically, you have to add a little bit of extra surface so that those wings basically continually kind of correct for it as it re-enters. Otherwise, if it didn't have those wings, it would just swing around like this and and have a bad day. You want that heat shield side, and the BFS will also have one side of the vehicle that is heat shield with their Pika X, SpaceX's proprietary um, their proprietary heat shield stuff. Oh, I didn't realize this thing had a little landing gear. <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, yeah. So the Pika X, the one side of the BFS will have uh, a heat shield, the other side won't. So if it turns around or does anything, that's very, 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 that'll be a very, very, very bad day. So they need it to enter um, and be stable. So that's the only reason there's really a Delta Wing on the upcoming BFS. Um, yeah, so there's the Delta Wing debate. There we go. <laughs> um, so uh, thoughts on nuclear-powered rockets. Thank you, Richard. Um, thermal, electric, and will we ever have one? I hope so. Uh, I, nuclear power makes a lot of sense. It's very high specific impulse. It means it's extremely efficient. And you basically, instead of, you can just heat up your propulsion. You don't necessarily have to burn it off with oxidizer. Is that correct? I actually need to do some more research and reading up on nuclear propulsion specifically. But nuclear propulsion ends up being crazy efficient. Um, and it makes a ton of sense. NASA worked on it in the 60s and 70s with the NERVA program. Um, they also had the Orion program, which is not the same as the Orion capsule. And NASA basically, as a matter of fact, Plumbrook Station out there in Ohio, which is um, still there. It's just used now as the vacuum chamber and the um, acoustic resonance chamber and a shakedown table. Um, that place actually was made initially for testing nuclear power um, in the during those that era, um, kind of Cold War era. And it also was going to be used for um, propulsion for nuclear testing as well. So, yeah. Can you look at my Falcon Heavy? I don't know. Can you? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Can you? Yes. Yes, you can. You just did. Um, the Orion, yeah. The By the way, the Orion program back then, um, okay, just double checking the launch. Just to confer, re reaffirm to everyone, uh, the launch is now happening in about an hour. They did get delayed, so... Um, yeah. Um, sorry, I'm trying to keep up with my Discord channel here too, guys. Sorry. <laughs> like watching paint dry. Yeah, I read that. Ah, ha, ha. Um, so yeah, the launch will be in about an hour. So I'm just going to kind of hang out here with you guys for a bit too still. Um, how do those planets move? Well, magic, magic, solar, solar magic, solar magic, magical solar. Um, does the Falcon Heavy separate? No. These models are... Link in the description, guys. If you ever have a question, where did anything, who is what, who is your father, just look in my description. You'll probably find the links you need. Um, as a matter of fact, I have the link in the description to my new upcoming series that I hope you guys all go follow. Actually, I'm going to wait. I want you to right now click on that. Please. Um, we just launched it on Friday, and the first episode will come out next Friday. That's what we could do. Guys, let's do this. Oh my gosh, why didn't I think of this? We're looking for stuff to do. Let's go to facebook.com slash spacing out everyday astronaut. I'm going to pull up the, the trailer. We're going to watch this trailer in full screen glory. Hold on. This is what we're going to do. And uh, I'm going to pull this up. Give me one second here. And then we are going to watch the trailer together. All right, ready? 
Here we go. Here is the official trailer for the introduction of just our first episode um, of Spacing Out on Facebook Watch. Here it is. What's it going to look like to explore the red planet? That's me. Yeah, let her rip. I don't think there's anything ridiculous about a, a grown man-child in a spacesuit tying balloons to himself. <laughs> I'll be over here doing science. <sighs> I'm fine. We did it. We did a thing, I do guys. travel a lot. I travel hey, within stop. the country, but I also go... Yeah, we did it. There you go. First first uh, time you get to check that out, maybe. So please, if you can, go check out that page. Um, that is uh, facebook.com slash spacing out. Gonna... Everyday Astronaut is the link. So there you go. Uh, like I said, it's a very different show, very different thing than what I'm doing here on my own. Uh, it required a whole crew, a big crew, uh, a big budget, and uh, it was a lot of fun. It was... It's still a lot of fun. We're, we're we have one episode totally completed. That's what's going to be airing Friday. Um, it, like I said, it has Mars Insight Lander in it, and we're gonna we're releasing it just before Mars Insight, so you can kind of tee up Mars Insight. Um, but then we also will be doing a lot of other cool like air launching and things like that. So yeah, there we go. Gonna gonna pawn Vsauce soon. I don't know what that means. There we go. KS Everyone wants me to play KSP. I don't know. That would be pushing my computer to the limits. Doing a 4K render, doing a live stream, and playing KSP. Should we see if we can do that? Oh, Mac Mackenzie, thank you. Love the trailer. Can you do a full-length documentary on SpaceX? Yeah. I mean, I, I absolutely could someday. Maybe we... Maybe after... Maybe that could be like a goal... In, yeah, of course, I, I, yeah, I can, I can do that, um, to do something like that, though, I'd probably want to do it right, and, and actually get, like, a, you know, an interview with Elon, and, and Gwen, and, um, some of the people, and actually do it right, I wouldn't want to just, you know, cobble together a bunch of stuff, and make a thing, but I, I like that idea, yeah, that'd be great, let's crash the stream, play KSP, Let's push my computer. You guys are a big fan of hoping to see my computer fail. Which, by the way, we're almost halfway done with this render already. It's rendering basically real time, which is crazy. Um, do the new Shepard and KSP? Okay, I like that idea. You talked me into it. We're doing it. Um, should we do it in realism overhaul? No, that's the real question. Realism overhaul? Um... <laughs> let's melt this new pc <laughs> oh the solution is to buy more computers we just need to triple the computers all right what do you guys think realism overhaul or standard ksp all right so start with stock <laughs> we're getting we're doing realism we're doing realism this will take this takes forever to load up but i'll let you guys see the loading screen in all of its glory mm-hmm <laughs> This is what happens when you just randomly have to um, make content. I'm going to put this over here because that's where I like it to be when we're doing Kerbal. <laughs> um, the launch is now in one hour. That's just so you guys know. I do have the reusability mod. Oh, thank you, Mode VR. Congrats on the show. Would love to see some space VR content from you like that. Have I ever tried VR? Uh, yes, no, but I would love to mix, you know, start playing around with VR. I think it'd be really cool, actually. Um, I'm definitely a fan. I'm becoming more of a fan. I really want to get into it, so, um, I love that idea. And maybe someday we'll do, like, a VR tour of somewhere cool or something. That'd be awesome. I would love to do that. Um, yeah, I, I hope. Uh, yeah, we're doing a render, a YouTube Live, and RSO slash RO, so Realism Overhaul and Real Solar System. Um, could I get access to the Falcon 9 or BFR factory? Um, thank you, Pwn, and also thank you, Mode VR. Um, I, so personally, yes, I've been in the, in the SpaceX's Hawthorne facility. I was just there a month ago. Um, I've been there like five or six times. 
it's easy to go there, but filming in there is almost entirely a no-no. Um, they have to approve every single shot before you shoot it um, because of ITAR restrictions. So, like, basically nuclear arms concerns and things like that. Um, so, yeah, um, it, it's it's hard to tell. Um I don't think it would take it, it would take quite the red carpet for them to actually allow filming and any of those things. Pre patch limit. Have you guys ever seen that? I actually hear my computer for the first time. I've never heard it. There we go. Eleven minutes still. Let's take a look at the CPU. See if it hates me yet. This is the first time I've actually heard the fan on it. That's hilarious. This is what it takes apparently. Um, we still are, we still have 25 gigs free of RAM. That's hilarious. All right, well, I guess we're not pushing it too hard. You went to Kennedy Space Center a few weeks ago, and it was crazy cool. I'm glad you went. It is awesome. If you haven't, um, if you haven't visited any of the space centers, uh, I know some of you are not from the United States. If you're from the United States and you haven't visited a space center, shame on you. They're all over the place. We talk about that actually in my upcoming video that will be coming out today. Um, kind of where a lot of those things are. You need to go visit them. Um, if you're not from the United States, I understand. Oh, this is going to be... It's not liking this already. <laughs> um, space box. I don't know. Everybody asked, not sure. We'll do that. Oh, man. Um, all right. <laughs> it starts... If, I, if it starts to smoke, I can stop playing KSP. Uh, I would love that. You should set up hotkeys for... Oh, that's a good idea, Philip James. We'll do that someday. Um, a 50 booster rocket in KSP. Well, let's see how this is handling. It's not liking this. It's not liking this. It's not liking to simultaneously render 4K and try and do this. But, um, BFR Saturn V... It's a pretty good question, but I think the real question isn't BFR or Saturn V. I think the real question is BFR or SLS, and that's something we're doing, not in the video that's coming out today, but that's something that that's a direct comparison we're doing in the video that's coming out this week. So yes, the answer to that is just yes. <laughs> um, I really wish I don't think they have a new Glenn capsule, even in that reusability. So we got to find a capsule that kind of looks like the little new Glenn guy a little bit. Sure. 4K. How wide is that thing? I know the top's a little bit wider than the base of it. I don't actually know the dimensions of this thing, so this is going to be very interesting. It's not very... It's not huge. Um, I need Linus Tech Tips. I know Linus. Or Linus, sorry. <laughs> Linus Tech Tips. You're flying over the U.S. Going to Kennedy Space Center. Congrats, Kung Fu Fat Bear. That's awesome. I'm very excited. Um, what do I think about Falcon Super Heavy? Uh, I don't think Falcon Super Heavy will happen in lieu of, obviously, the uh, BFR slash um, BFS. Um, Falcon Super Heavy. Oh, or do you mean... Yeah, yeah. There's no point, guys, in, in making a bigger version of the Falcon Heavy, basically, with four cores, if that's what you mean by Falcon Super Heavy, which I think you do. Uh... Very unnecessary, in my opinion. Let's see. Let's do like a little... I want something... I wish there was like a... That looks good enough. Sure. All right, because this doesn't dock to anything, so we just need a nose cone. It needs... It has three drogue shoots and three um, normal parachutes. A lot of redundancy in this thing, because people are going to be on it. So that's a good thing. Wait, what did that say? Uh, let's just do this. I don't know. Oh, those look big, but perfect. Haha. <laughs> there we go. Let's make sure this is in the right order. New Glenn, not New Glenn. We need, um, we need, wait. Yeah, not New Glenn. We need uh, New Shepard. We're, we're testing out New Shepard. And guys, we're not even going to put a heat shield on it because it really doesn't need a heat shield. But it does have these little itty bitty, teeny tiny, uh, little thrusters. Little solid, like this, that go poof, right before it lands. Just like a Soyuz capsule. This is, we'll just put a whole bunch of these things in there. 
Um, we're gonna lit, we're only gonna put a tiny little bit in there so they only burn for 0.2 seconds. Wait, that only delivers 10 meters per second of delta V. Well, that's probably about right. Here, I don't know. We'll we'll do that. Also, we need to stick a big old real SRB in there for its. Uh, they have a launch abort system, small kick motor for satellites. Um, that's actually something funny. If you see pictures of the inside of the New Shepard, um, here we go. This will be perfect. It has what looks like a really pretty table in the in the center of it. That's not a table. That's an abort motor, and that thing is there to you know get out of Scranton if it needs to. Get out of Dodge. Is that what you say? I don't know. Get out of Omaha. Get out of wherever you are. Sure. Uh, so I'm just trying to make sure this is staging correctly. Man, my computer is not liking rendering the 4K stuff right now. Um, yeah. Airbus UK was hiring Kerbal experts. I wish that could be me. That would be amazing. If I could get paid to play Kerbal, game over. Productiv or productivity would be zero. Okay, we're going to push these up here a little bit. I don't want those sticking out really ugly. Cool. And remember, I, I did mention it doesn't really need a heat shield. Um, coming straight down from the edge of space, straight down, really doesn't get that hot. Um, heat is uh, is cubed that of velocity. So say um, a vehicle is re-entering the atmosphere and it's doing so at about 17,000 miles an hour, or like 25,000 uh, kilometers an hour, or around 7,000 kilometers a second or something wait, 7,000 meters per second, um, they, uh, as, they, as they hit the atmosphere, so say you're going that fast, um, it's, hitting, it's, it's hitting atmosphere and it's creating this really hot plasma, and that stuff is crazy, 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 crazy hot, um, and it has to do that for like five to ten minutes as it re-enters. So that's, it needs this ablative heat shield that can survive that heat punishment and continually discard chunks of the heat shield, very small, um, to, to dissipate the heat. And, uh, and that's actually very different when you're going straight down. You just don't have that extra velocity. And since velocity and heat, the relationship there is cubed, say you're going from, say you're just, we'll make up numbers. Say you're going 2,000 kilometers an hour and it's, and it's say 2,000 degrees. We'll just keep it simple. No, how about 1,000 kilometers an hour, 1,000 degrees. Um, Kelvin, I don't know. X and X, doesn't matter. But now say you go from 2,000 uh, kilometers an hour, it doesn't go up to 2,000 degrees or 4,000 degrees. It goes up, so that, so, actually wait, 1,000 is gonna be a hard number, because wait, 1,000 times, I'm bad at this, but it'd go up 64 times, is, it'd go up to 64, what is that, 6,400 or 64,000? I'm bad, I don't math. I don't math. Big fan, stay awesome, great content. Thank you, Hoovy. Um, so yeah, that's that's the, the relationship. So basically, excellent 3D rendering of launch site. Yeah, this is, uh, there we go. We're, since we can't do it live yet. Oh, there we go, thank you. A scaled rendering, it's about 12 feet in diameter, so that's that's, you know, about four meters in diameter. That's about perfect for this. Excellent. Um, when is the launch? It's in 50 minutes. You guys need to keep a, a, a eyes on that live stream for me since I'm now doing, I'm now entertaining you like some kind of monkey. Entertain us, Tim. Maybe I don't want to. Maybe I want to sleep. I want to check in on that render, too. That's what I want to do. Three more minutes of rendering. And then I can start to post that. Okay, so the next thing we need to do... Again, if you're tuning in right now, we're basically just playing around because we're waiting. Um, we're waiting for the new Shepard to launch, which will be in about 50 minutes. It got delayed twice today. Hopefully it still goes off. Um, this is not how things normally go. What I'll probably do... Maybe I'll try to cut this up into two YouTube videos at some point, and um, yeah, yeah, that's what we'll do. Why are there decouplers here 
in uh, in the structural. I'm trying to find like a um, what's that called? Like a there we go. His face. No, we want a no. I don't know procedural. Where is that procedural? Like fuselage. No, no, wrong, wrong, bad. You should feel bad, 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 bad. But this, no, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do something big like this. No, that's really bad. Now I should feel terrible. Anyone see procedural? Oh, right there probably. Ha, 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 ha. Yes. Okay, I'm going to make this the same diameter as that. Four meters. Not very long. This is going to be that top ring thing. You'll see. This will all make sense when I'm done. Something like that. Launch status. Um, 48 minutes now. I don't know. 3.6. This is perfect because it tapers down a little bit. So we're just going to keep it like this. So this actually has some drag brakes. Um, let's do aerodynamics. Let's find these air brakes. Actually, I wonder if they have... No, you know what? We're going to do it Blue Origin style. We're going to go like this. We're going to shrink these down. Um, scale, let's go like 50%. We're going to put these babies uh, flush up against the top here. These are drag brakes. So this actually has drag brakes. Um, and the Falcon 9 does not have that. Um, so what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to see if we can, uh, oh dang it, we can't do it with this, this is dumb, this is very dumb. Where's like a little, little, oh here we go. Okay, this will be more gooder. And I'm going to set an action group to deploy these, which hopefully it just kind of, um, Standard flip, split. Oh, 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 oh. I did a thing and I'm scared. Flap, inactive, active. Spoiler, inactive. Oh, uh, huh? Huh? Ah, huh? Uh, oh, I know. I know what I need to do. I need to make an action group for it. Action group one. Click on it. Activate spoiler. I don't know if that's right. All right. Also, ooh. Um, hello, Renau. Good morning. Hope to see a launch today. Uh, I do too. I would much rather see a launch than watch me play Kerbal. Um, so thank you, Renau. I agree. Jake, could you possibly work with SpaceX to get a tour of the new Boca Chica in South Texas upon its completion? Get authorization in advance for filming. Jake, thank you for your tip. I have no idea. Um, We'll see. I I have no idea how much SpaceX will be willing to work with, um, I guess, with social media influencers. I don't know. We'll see. I would love to do that, though. And I will I will push to make that happen, but I, I can't make any promises. Oh, man. These are cool. I, like, never use Realism Overhaul, by the way, so this is going to be quite interesting. Okay, quick. Someone do the math and let me know about how much delta v uh we need to actually give this thing it also has four cool these are upside down basically um we're going to shrink these way down there we go can i solve a rubik's cube yes not very quickly but yes i'm not like one of those speedy mccuby guys that you see on the internet Okay, so we're going to do this at three and a half meters, basically. There we go. And how tall is it again? It's about... <laughs> you, you're right, I do need much bigger windows. Okay, so it's... Um, what's that showing? 14.8 meters? Okay, yeah, so about 15 meters long. Let's just make it that. I guess it will have landing legs. Hey, this is kind of like doing something. Look at that. Texture. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. 
No. What is that, Beetlejuice? We want just white. Good enough. I don't know. Blue, Blue Origin is the RC Cola. Come on. No. No, they are not. Blue Origin is awesome. If you guys, you guys are silly. I wonder if I have a BE3 in here. I'm sure I don't. I'm almost positive I do not. Um, What's this guy? Ignition's one. We need more than one ignition. That's going to be a pretty important thing. Um, Ignition one. This is one of those things that I wish I could turn off in Kerbal Space Program. Because I just don't. Pressure fed. So, I'll, oh, that's going to be not near enough thrust to weight ratio. <laughs> Mm, let's just see. It is in cape. Wait, let's fill it up. How about that? <laughs> Thrust to weight ratio 0. 0.01. That's not going to leave the launch pad. Uh, what mods am I using? This is a full suite of basically the uh, the realism overhaul slash real solar system. So it's like 50 mods. I can't even begin to describe it. It takes a long time to figure out what all you need. Um, it took me like someone basically just showing me exactly how to do it. Yeah, wouldn't recommend it. You know what? We could just stick like a, a Merlin on there. That's probably going to be the closest thing, to be honest. Oh, that's going to be way too powerful, too, probably. Why is one of my one of my Merlins is stretched really weird like that? Look at that. That is the worst thing I've ever seen. I do not want that. Sam, I am. Are these... Oh, these are... Here, I'm gonna... Well, maybe it does make sense to sort them like this. A J2, way too powerful. A J2, way too powerful. I don't know what engine to use. I wish I knew realism, realism overall a lot better than I do. My knowledge on this thing is very sad. All these only have one ignition. Ooh, RL10. That's another vacuum, though. Clip the stretch one into the body would be an option. Um, oh, here we go. But only one ignition. I want to know how to turn that off. Does anyone know how to turn that off? Um, the upper stage has... Lower stage has... Th well, there is no upper stage on this thing. Renau! Do I think there's enough need for Rocket Lab and other small launchers to be profitable? Wait, do I think there is a need for them to be profitable? Yes, they need to be profitable in order to have a business case. Uh, do I think there's a need for them, period? Is that the question? Enough need for Rocket Lab and other small launchers. Um, ah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, there must be. There, if, if not, then their business case is mute. We'll find out. Um, yeah, that's, I guess, a, a big question. And maybe why... Um, not everyone that, that is, that is kind of a big concern, you know, is there actually a market for that? I think is more, um, and I don't know, we're going to have to find out. I, I wish I knew. Um, yeah, we'll see. I guess it does seem like there isn't a lot of, a, not a huge small sat market yet. So we will have to see, we will have to see. Um, I wonder what this is. What this would have for um, sea level thrust, because this might be low enough. We're going to remove tanks, add this. Ah, look at that. Too low of sea level thrust with an RL10. Go figure. What about like a? Uh, search for BE3. I I almost am positive I do not have the BE3. I will laugh if I do. Yeah, I do not. But that was a good idea. I, I appreciate that idea. Um, let's stick a... Oh, I have the BE-4, but not... What? Why do I have that and not a BE-3? I don't know what this thing is. Not powerful enough. I wish I could sort by power. That's what I want. M1. Okay, way too powerful. RS25, way too powerful. RD1. Guys, we're going to find something. Not the Merlin vacuum. All oh, that might be what we end up sticking with. I'm going to sort by name because this is getting very confusing. Oh, maybe that would be uh, an idea. <laughs> this is You guys are seeing me just have no idea 
how to life in general. Uh, BE4. Next would be BE... Before that, B, no, no BE3. What's this thing? Um, oh, it's a nuclear... At this point, I don't even care. I just want it to work. I just want to fly this thing. I don't want to sit here and choose engines for 10 weeks. Welcome to the... <laughs> Ask Tim to choose an engine day. Okay, what's this thing have for thrust? Um, let's remove the tanks. Add some tanks. Really? What? Did I mess up the scale on this thing or something, or what is going on? How on earth does it not have near enough uh, thrust to weight ratio to take off even? Hmm. Even with a big old... Merlin 1D. This is surprising to me, guys. Um, anyone have, have any advice? <laughs> oh, also, you know what I should be doing? I should have one of these on here, by the way. Hang on. I know what I'm doing now. Dad. Diameter. 3 point... We're going to go with, like, 3.3. .3. And we're going to go about 12, sure. Now we're going to go like this. Remove the tanks. Add some tanks. Remove those tanks. Add some tanks. We're going to make it skinnier. That'll save us some weight. I don't know. Is this getting close enough? 3.5 something something. How? How? Nine? There? <laughs> uh, use the left rendering. That's got less... What do you mean use the the left rendering? That's got less mass. What are you... T what? Uh, can I scream when the launch starts? I will. <laughs> Just for you. The launch is in 45 minutes. Okay, 3.3 by 13.5. Sure. Is this thing super heavy or something too? Here, let's make this a little bit less long. Oh, maybe that thing's crazy, crazy heavy. Look at that. Sure. I don't know. Doesn't... <laughs> You're right. Uh, I don't even like the shape either. I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to add another one like this that is a cone. You'll see what I'm doing here. Because it kind of tapers all Willy Wonka-like. Uh, I want like a rounded cone. Smooth cone, perfect. Ha 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 ha. Huh? And top. Huh? Wait. What? I need an adult. Help. Bottom. Apparently that's now the bottom. Look at that. Oh, now we're getting there. Does it have a Merlin 1C? That might be compatible. Um, which one is this? This is a Merlin 1D. Ignition's only one. We can't do that. What is happening? Since when does this only have one ignition in the Merlins? What happened to my life? What happened? Ah, oh, why? Does anyone know how to change that? If anyone knows, and also thank you, Richard. Um, add shepherd legs. We'll do that. We'll at least get it to look cool. That's what we'll do first. First and foremost, look cool. Because, admit it, guys. The new Shepard, despite being potentially one of the most phallic-looking rockets ever, looks awesome. Looks like a virus. That's what I think it looks like. Hey, look at this. This is actually getting close. Let's stretch this baby out a little more. Maybe even a little more. Ha ha! A vector and thrust limit it? I like that idea. Yeah, maybe I'll just do like a... But an RS-25 can only ignite once as well. Hmm, this is a real problem here. Ground only, cool. Cool. Yeah, one ignition, one ignition... 
Five ignition. It's probably not enough thrust, though. What's this thing have for thrust? Let's get it down here where it matters. Yep, not enough. Not even close to enough. Ugh. Hat KSP. Use the F1. <laughs> uh, no launch yet. We are uh, we are ready, waiting about 40 more minutes for it to launch. Uh, it's been delayed a few times, so instead we're playing Kerbal because uh, that's about the best we can do right now. When you can't watch a real launch, might as well build something in Kerbal. Hey, here we go. This might be a good little... It doesn't have an arrow spike, but when you don't have any other options, why not? Let's do this. Oh, even that has... Oh, hold on. We may have finally unlocked it. This is going to be our engine. It can't gimbal, though. That's going to be a real problem. But this is what we're going to use because I'm sick of doing that. Um, how long until the launch? Uh, 40 minutes-ish. I don't know. They keep changing. If you need to know, just look on Twitter or something. Okay, then this thing also has fins down here. Does this look close enough? Right-click on the engine in one place, choose engine config, and change the version. Engine config. Hmm. But all this does is... Oh! You were probably saying that for the Merlin. Let's try that. I, I like the idea of doing the Merlin just because it seems cool. Although it didn't seem very powerful. But I guess they, did, they have continually upgraded the Merlin. So, engine, show you. Aha. 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 Remove tanks. Add tanks. Put this. Thank you, kind internet stranger who I now have already forgotten who you were. Okay, so now we just got to get the right amount of fuel in here to get it above a. There we go. I think we finally did it. We're doing the thing we were supposed to do. Steve. I'm going to make these ones a little bigger. Um, and these ones um, will start off positive in their uh, control authority. These ones will start off at zero. Mass strength. Mo oh, great. Can I not just easily change this in realism overhaul? Oh, no. Flip. Aha. Uh -huh. Standard control. Control deflect. Oh, no. This is going to be a mess, I'll tell you that. I actually just kind of want these to be inactive. How do I do that? Pitch percent. Oh. Zero, zero, zero. You're getting zero. You're getting zeroed out here, buddy. Haha. -ha. And these ones will have to flip in the air. I'm ready to try this thing. Hey there, sloppy top. <laughs> and also, hi there. Um, should be about 28,500 kilograms. Oh, you're right. The, the engine should also... Kind of go up to make it look more like a BE-3, which it's not. The launch is in 30 minutes. Um, launch is delayed again. Hold on. Is that new information? You guys got to just watch me computer. Let's see if they delayed it again. Okay, still 11.13 Central, which is 33 minutes from right now. Okay. There we go. Does this look pretty close? Can we do this? Can we launch this thing? I'm going to launch it um, with retracted landing gear. I want these to kind of look right-ish. Perfect. Oh, it probably needs a little bit of nitrogen thrusters up there, doesn't it? 
probably. We'll use... We're going to use cold gas thrusters from SpaceX. Why not? <laughs> now, here's the problem. We have to make it so this... Um, let's see. These need to have... Uh, we need to have a little bit of... I don't remember what these things feed off of. They feed off of, like... Um, liquid fuel and oxidizer, just kind of the generic thing. So we're going to add some... No room for tank! Ah, you turkey. Um, what's the best way to do this without making a huge mess of absolutely everything? Which won't happen. I am bound to make a giant mess of the world. Okay. Da, 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 da. This is just going to be our RCS tank, basically. Diameter, what was it? 3.3 .3 or something? Just little itty bitty 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 guy. Original white. Liquid fuel and oxidizer. There we go. Oh, looks like we need to make it... I want to actually make this down to 3.3. .3. I think that's going to look... Writer, more rightness. Here's our new shepherd, everybody. <laughs> the launch is in thirty minutes. Do 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 do. We weren't meaning to play Kerbal today. I promise. Uh, it just kept getting delayed. The launch has been delayed from. I've been up since like really early my time. I guess not necessarily really early, but early my time. Um. 7.30 or so, waiting for this launch. So I'm patiently waiting. It's been delayed a few hours now. Thank you, Steven. My enthusiasm is great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, th if anything, that's about all I've really got in life is an extra amount of enthusiasm. <laughs> so by the way, remember, guys, this thing is... Um, it's about, what, 14... Um, it's about 14 meters tall, 15 meters tall. Uh, the Falcon 9 is 70 meters tall. So this thing just barely makes it up to the top of the landing legs of the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. So it is very, very, very small. Okay, first I want to see if my... Um, how do I... Active. Spoiler, active. Active? Active. Give me something to work with here. No. Uh, brakes? <gasps> cool. Okay, so we need spoiler to be active. That's what we're going to do. We're going to turn this into spoiler. That was cool. Thank you. It is It is a, a great mug. Um, spoiler. Active. Save. Launch. Here we go. Do I play Space Flight Simulator? No, this is sp uh, the only Space Flight Simulator I need. Um, can I please scream Kerbal for everyone? I don't think so. The launch got canceled? No! Did it really? <laughs> Let's find out. Do you guys see that on Twitter or what? Twitter.com slash Blue Origin. That'll be their like, overall status, which we'll just go to here mm -hmm. I don't see anything about I don't see it check the website blueorigin.com nope I don't see anything you guys let me know let's do um all right let's do a systems check here um we are we should probably fire up our RCS make sure our RCS is good to go before we yes it is all right ladies and gentlemen we have RCS we're just gonna go for launch with people for the first time why not here we go three two one hip hip firing up that engine three two one go uh oh uh oh did we math wrong did I math wrong Oh, insufficient avionics. Why? Why? These people aren't good enough avionics for you guys, or what? All right. Well, we're sitting there. Oh, I also forgot to do... Uh, 
I also forgot to make it so we have an abort system active, which we definitely need to do. All right, cool. My, uh, my Patreon Discord people are saying that it is definitely still active. Toggle engine. Okay, we want that. That's important. We also want that decoupler to decouple this guy. Decouple. Okay, there is our abort action group. So why did it give us such a low... It didn't have enough thrust to get us off the ground, and why exactly is that? It shows our atmospheric thrust-to-weight ratio of above 1.0, which should be plenty. So we'll remove a little bit more. Sure, we'll do that. Okay, so best thing to wake up to, seeing me live stream. Well, thank you, Marmoth, and hello, and good morning. Um, probe core. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We need the probe core in there, don't we? That's one of the things we have to do. If we don't do that, we're doing bad. Whoosh. Probe core. On its way. I never know which one of these to do in this realism overhaul. It's very confusing. Hmm? Lasts approximately three minutes. We need something that lasts more than three minutes. I don't know what to do with this. I, I'm so bad at realism overhaul. Um, avionics, okay, that's good. Nine minutes. I think we need something longer than nine minutes. How do you, uh, huh? I'm so confused by this stuff. Get out of here, cabbage. Avionics, okay. But will they be? Delta avionics. Half hour. I like that. I like the idea of it lasting a while. Okay, now let's stick this on and see if it can control it enough. Hmm? Yay! We did a thing. We're also going to have to stick one of those up inside the capsule, I believe. Otherwise, we may run into issues there. I'm just going to push this down, clip it in there. Put this cap back on. Get your beanie on. It's cold. About like that. Okay. Um, again, I kind of want to make sure we have a full systems check on things beforehand. Make sure the thrusters are working out. What's that? The decoupler too. Oh, probably the stage separation. Okay, we want that down here. Okay. BE, wait, not BE3. New arm strong. Okay, I actually spelled something right for once. Okay, let's try this again. You get confused about realism overhaul and, and need for avionics. I get confused about realism overhaul. I just haven't used it enough. It's just confusing to me. Um... Everyone ask for a timer. I don't know how to do it. What, what do you want me to do for a timer? How? Am, just pay attention to the clock, guys. 20 minutes. I don't know. Okay, let's do a systems check with RCS. RCS is good. Um, let's make sure the brakes work. Yes! That's awesome. Look at that. This is actually... Oh, did they even check like their legs, I think. Legs work. Sweet. We are go, guys. Three, two, one. We are waiting till thrust builds. Three, two, one. Hip, hip. We have liftoff. We actually are doing it very slowly, but we're doing it. All right. I'm a little nervous about these <laughs> control surfaces up here acting very funny. Actually, I'm more nervous about these ones acting really funny when we come back down. As long as I can reverse it when we get going. Don't blink, you'll miss it. So yeah, this thing, you know, it's going to get up, hopefully get up to, um, we want it, it's apoapsis to hit 100 kilometers, so 100,000 meters. Um, Chris, hello. Hi, Tim. I'm asking for your birthday. Uh, 
All you're asking for your birthday is money to join Patreon. I'm your number one fan. You don't have any money. Is there any way you can join Discord? Hello, Justin. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, we keep the um, happy birthday, your upcoming birthday. We do keep the Discord uh, exclusive to Patreon supporters. Um, that way we keep it. Uh, the people that are invested in the show and the content uh, get, to, get to have the most interaction and get to be involved on every front. So, um, yeah, you can you can join Patreon um, to become a Discord member. And happy birthday. And thank you, Justin, for your support. That really means a lot. All right. Launch time is scheduled for 1613 uh, GMT. Yes. Do I want to go to the moon? Maybe later. I don't know. I mean, once it's like a tourist thing, sure. So here we go. Look at our app webs. It's climbing. Even though we're at 6,000 uh, meters, you know, we're going really fast. So even if we cut off the engine right now, um, are we also, re guys, we need to remember to save some of our Delta V <laughs> for landing. That's going to be quite important. We need to save fuel for landing. Um, how many minutes to go? 20 minutes. Um, guys, as soon as the, let me know, uh, discord members, as soon as you guys see the actual link, the live feed go up for, for blue origin, let me know. We'll uh, immediately switch to that because that is obviously a billion times more exciting than, than, uh, playing, than watching it happen in Kerbal space program. But this seems to be pretty accurate. They wouldn't be experiencing too high G forces during this climb. Um, can't I use a bouncy castle and party balloon? I could. Uh, it's BST. I don't know what that is. Uh, 20 minutes to its official launch. And hopefully the live stream starts up in about five minutes. Um, yeah. So again, we're trying to get our app webs here above 100,000. Or yeah, there's 100,000 meters, which is um, 100 kilometers. And that will be the Carmen line that we'll coast up to. And we need to leave enough fuel to land. Look at this, though. This is going to be pretty good. You're starting to see some stars. It's getting pretty up here. We're going to burn up to about 105. There we go. Because we are still in a little bit of atmosphere, so that will slow us down. We're going to do this. I'm going to do a little quick save action here, just in case. And basically, once it does this, I believe it separates from the booster right now. So I'll do that. There we go. This is pretty accurate. This is about what they'd be doing. So now they're ex you are weightless now. This is how this would work. Um, even though you're still going up, you're experiencing weightless weightlessness because your acceleration is zero. You're not experiencing any friction that's slowing the capsule down. Therefore, the capsule's not slowing down. Therefore, um, you're not slowing down. You're experiencing the same 9.8 meters per second of pull, uh, of gravity, pulling both of you guys back down at the same time. So there's nothing pushing on you. There's no chair to push on you. There's no anything. Everything around you is in the same state of free fall, basically. Even though you're going up still, um, that's how weightlessness really works. It's just a lack of something slowing you down. So, um... We're going to prioritize their parachutes once that's an option. Um, I'm also going to get the booster out of the way a little bit. I think it's insufficient avionics. No. No. We're going to... What happened to our avionics? What? Was that probe core not enough? Was that, was that not enough for you? No. Well, hopefully we can get our, our tourists back safe. That's really all that matters. And we're still going up, by the way, guys. We're, we're falling up still, basically. Uh, and it doesn't seem like I have any control, really, over the capsule. In real life, there should be some... Oh, wait. Let me try activating the thrusters. Uh-oh. I just did the parachutes instead of the thrusters. This is going very poorly for me. There we go. So now we're going to orient ourselves down. Again, we just want to make sure we're not going to run into uh, the capsule at all for any reason. We're going to get away from it since, uh, since it has failed. 
All right, now we're falling back. So we're still experiencing weightlessness. This is all weightlessness. Um, because you can't feel anything yet. You're above the atmosphere. There's nothing slowing you down, so you're just falling. And so is the capsule. So you're just floating, which would be amazing. That would feel so great. Um, Anthony Alva, your father's working on this. That's awesome. That is awesome. I may have ejected the avionics. That's my bad. Maybe? No, the avionics were on that thing. I just don't think they were good enough avionics, apparently. Do I want to be a real astronaut? Nope. I'll be a space tourist someday when it's, like, super routine and normal. Look, at that's cool. You can see the booster over there. Let's zoom in on that, baby. Oh, yeah. Hi. That's awesome. So currently, it appears that we must be slightly more aerodynamic. Oh, also, not necessarily aerodynamic, but I was doing some boosters like this. You know, I was pushing down with the thrusters, which gave us a little bit of acceleration downward. So now that we're starting to hit the atmosphere, you're going to notice a little bit of G-forces begin to begin to climb. Um, did I really automate or already deploy those? I hope I didn't. Okay, I didn't, I don't think. Do I have batteries on the first stage? Uh, the, so now we're going to see that, that aerodynamics are taking into effect. So this has a bigger, bigger surface area, less mass than that booster. Where did the booster go? There it is. So the booster is going to be falling quicker because it's, it's more aerodynamic. And this is why uh, the Falcon 9 booster needs heat shields on it and needs to do retro fires when the fairing doesn't. So the fairing, when, there's, when SpaceX is working on recovering the fairings, um, look, look at our G-forces here, climbing like crazy. So now we're hitting the atmosphere. It's slowing us down a lot, a lot, a lot. And that, but that booster, which is really, really aerodynamic, is still going way too fast. So we'll deploy our first uh, our drogue shoots at about twenty thousand. Sure, I have no idea when when they do it. Uh, let's deploy them manually. Okay, good. <laughs> Getting a little nervous there. Okay, we're gonna just do all this stuff manually. I'm a little nervous here. So they just have the first set of, of shoots that deploy, uh, like most capsules do. Launch is not over. Um, yeah, we have about 10 more minutes. Has anyone seen the live stream pop up yet? They are going live, hopefully. We're waiting for them to do so. You did these sub-ferry flights in KSP. Celebration of Blue today, too. Awesome, Jake. I'm glad I'm in good company. The booster's heavier and more aerodynamic, so it's going to... It's going, so it's not necessarily... If they're both, especially up in, in above the atmosphere, uh, weight doesn't matter. They're both going to fall at the exact same speed. Um, but... Once you get into the atmosphere, uh, the mass and the aerodynamics, so basically how much pr the aerodynamic properties will affect each of them. That's really all that matters um, once you get into the atmosphere. What's up? All right, sounds good, Sharon, if plays ro ro Roblox. It started? Did it start? Did it start? Did it start? Stream is up. It's live. Okay, let's find it. We'll get back to this because we have a real one to see. Where is it, guys? Is it on YouTube? Is it on their website? Good morning. Uh, uh. Yay! We did it. T minus 42 minutes. All right, so it looks like they delayed again for 40 more minutes. <laughs> no. <laughs> I have to pee so bad. <laughs> no. We're going to keep this live, though, so we can hear it when it does pop up. Uh, all right, well, we'll tune back in, I guess, and keep playing Kerbal, I guess. So, yeah. Uh, well, we're going to go back to this. I'm going to take a little restroom break. Um, I have had too much coffee this morning. So 
Uh, I'll be right back uh, now that we know the bad news. So, 42 minutes, guys. We can do it. I think we all dreamt about going to space when we were kids. But when the space shuttle program ended in 2011, I discovered a void in my life. That emptiness led to a newfound obsession with space. A few years later, I wound up bidding on a Russian spacesuit as a joke. When the box arrived at my doorstep, my friends asked, what are you going to do with a spacesuit? The answer, what can't I do with a spacesuit? That's how Everyday Astronaut was born. Since then, the suit hasn't left my side. It's even gone around the world with me. From remote villages in Myanmar, rockets, and spaceships. Beautiful fields in Norway. I'm fighting a cow to get a picture right now. Here I am on vacation in the beautiful Norway with my beautiful boyfriend. I even proposed to my wife in the suit at Machu Picchu in Peru. These days I work with leaders in the space industry to create fun and inspirational content. I've even been invited to different NASA facilities across the country all for the sake of sharing my excitement with the world. Hey there, it's me, Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. Now, I'm not sure if you're aware, but NASA is doing some incredible... This is, this is church for us space nerds. This is where Gene Kranz was sitting when people first came up. This is with permission. I still don't know how. I love that I'm standing on something that says urine bags. This thing's gonna fly like a cat and eat. Whatever that means. That dog's gonna have a sore throat by the end of the day, I'll tell you that. Especially once he tries to explain to his friends that he just saw an astronaut flying majestically through the sky for an hour. This thing has officially become the bane of my existence. Everyday Astronaut's mission is to bring space down to Earth for everyday people, to communicate science through humor and imagination, but most importantly, to spark your curiosity, to want to find your place in the cosmos. Join my adventures as I seek to find out why exploring space is important, inspiring, and quite frankly, really, really neat. Show your support by visiting patreon.com slash everydayastronaut. And we're back. Hi, everybody. Okay, so some housekeeping items first. Uh, so first off, hi, guys, if you happen to have tuned in right now. I've been live streaming for like an hour and a half waiting uh, for Blue Origin to launch their new Shepard. This is the eighth flight of the new Shepard vehicle. Uh, this is the third version of, or the third physical new Shepard because they do reuse this thing over and over. Um, so this is the second time that this, Booster and capsule will fly. Um, they go on about a 12-minute long flight, um, which is uh, pretty. Yeah, which is which is pretty short. You get about four minutes of weightlessness, but still, it's really cool. Um, the booster does land itself, uh, very similar um, to SpaceX. They actually beat SpaceX to hitting the Kármán line or going up uh, out of the atmosphere and coming back landing propulsively. We can obviously argue all day long about how you know the relative velocity and the horizontal blah, blah blah doing work with a massive booster they are they're not the same but they still guys this is really exciting technology and blue origin nails it um so we can all be excited about that i think we can all hopefully agree on that um but yeah we're still waiting here's the here's the problem we are waiting for them to launch and we have um according to blue origin oopsies um we are waiting 37 more minutes um, for the launch, but that's about thir 20 minutes away from their live stream beginning, hopefully. So, we'll find out. Um, some other housekeeping items. Um, first off, um, make sure you guys are following me on Twitter and Instagram. Just search Everyday Astronaut. Um, I do a lot of updates there about, like, when I'm going to be live streaming. I do updates when videos are coming out. As a matter of fact, 
Uh, Elon Kerman in our Discord says, check on the rendering of the video. It's been done for 20 minutes. Um, it's already uploading to YouTube. As a matter of fact, I believe it's done being uploaded onto YouTube. So when I'm done with you guys here with this, I will be posting a new video finally for the first time in over a month. Uh, I have been gone for like, I was gone for three weeks basically, um, working on my new show. That's right, I'm actually the host of a show called Spacing Out. Um, it's partnered with space.com. Uh, it's the network that's airing it is Facebook Watch, which is similar to like Hulu and Netflix. It's Facebook's original programming. Um, I've actually been working on this show for a year. Uh, it finally is coming out on Friday. We just announced it last Friday. We're doing an AMA on May 4th, trying to get people excited about the new show. We do have the trailer up. Um, you can find it at facebook.com slash um, spacing out everyday astronaut. And uh, you don't, I don't even think you have to be a member of Facebook to watch this content. Just so you know, um, I know that not everyone has a Facebook account, um, and uh, but it's free, totally free to watch. It's bonus content for you guys, hopefully. Hopefully you treat it like that because I'm still going to be doing everything I normally do on, on YouTube here. Um, nothing's changing. So, um, yeah, nothing's changing here uh, between us on, on, on YouTube. I'm still producing. I'm pretty, I just finished... Uh, the longest video I've ever shot, basically, um, and it's even a two-parter, and even being two parts, each video is 20 minutes long, basically. So that first one's coming out today, so really pay attention. Make sure you hit that little bell. Make sure you're, you're keeping up to when it's actually going to, uh, to release. Um, other things, um, a few more topics. If you want to help support what I do uh, and want me to produce more videos and get faster computers like I, like I just bought recently... Uh, which, by the way, has made editing... Oh my gosh, you can ask my Discord members. I edited this video in basically a day and a half, and normally it takes me like three days. I honestly think my new computer is so much faster that it's just... It's amazing. I didn't have to wait for anything. It, it was amazing. It handles 4K like it's a joke. It even handles 6K like it's 1080p. I mean, it's just amazing. So I'm really excited about that. So thank you to my Patreon supporters. If you want to help support, there's a link in the description, patreon.com slash everydayastronaut. You can join our exclusive subreddit. You can also join our um, exclusive Discord channel. So again, for those of you tuning in, we are waiting for the the Blue Origin uh, New Shepard launch today. It has been delayed a couple hours now, several hours. We're kind of just twiddling our thumbs and having fun, guys. So um, yeah, so it has been delayed. So um, so here's the specs. People want to know the specs of this new computer. Uh, 10 cores, 3 gigahertz base, 4.5 gigahertz turbo boost uh, Intel. And it's 64 gigs of uh, whatchamacallit, whatchamacallit spec RAM. 2 terabyte internal SSD with 3,000 megabytes per second read-write speeds. And 16 gig uh, Vega 64 graphics card. So it is a beast. Um, yeah. So the other... Oh, the other thing we need to delay it again? Hold on. I'm going to... No, it's not. Don't say delay it again, guys. At this point... Yeah. The live stream is up on YouTube channel with a countdown to 30... Yeah, I can do that for now. Uh, we also have our, our KSP to finish up if you guys want as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sweet. So... How many qubits? You guys are nerdy. That's not a quantum computer yet. Do I have a laptop? Yes, I do as well, Elon Kerman. And thank you for the tip here. Um, Meg, M me games one or Meg Ames one. Ames is a city near me in Iowa. The live stream is up already on Blue Origin YouTube channel with a countdown of 35 minutes left before launch. Thank you for, for letting... It, so now we can all look at this and we all know... We'll all be on the same page together. We are waiting. The, that means the live stream should start in about 15, 18 minutes. Um, and also, thank you, uh, McCalliator. You love my enthusiasm. Well, thank you. I think that's the one thing I have going for me in life is puppy dog-like enthusiasm for just about everything. So we, um, I will let you guys... Um, oh, Nick Basil, SpaceX or Blue Origin, who do you trust the most? I like that you said... You actually added a uh, a caveat. Who do you trust the most? Because I uh, I don't want to pit the two as far as companies, but trusting. I do have a little mistrust in SpaceX timelines due to the Elon optimism. Elon time is real. 
Uh, it seems to be about two to one. So if he says three months, it means six months. If he says one year, it says it means two years, two years, four years, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in that case, when Blue Origin, they just don't talk. So I, I have no reason to not trust them. You know what I mean? They're just a very quiet private company. So I don't see any reason to not trust them. They nail everything they say they're going to do. They're very far along in their BE4 methane engine. Um, it's a beast. It's a huge, powerful engine. I'm really exciting. Um, Dim Sum, you love my music as well. What program do I use to compose? I use Logic. Uh, yep, and it's pretty great. Thank you, by the way. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it says right here, live cast, live webcast, uh, and maybe some, I'm not going to judge people if they can't read. Live webcast begins at T minus 15 minutes, and it's T minus 31 minutes and 30 seconds, which means we have 16 minutes and 30 seconds until the webcast hopefully begins. Hopefully they're over weather problems and all that stuff. Do I use OBS? Yes. Um, there we go. Now you guys know. BFR versus SLS, you'll find out this week. You will find out very soon. I've already shot the video. I have to edit that portion of the video, but today you're going to see my NASA versus SpaceX is that even fair? Uh, is that even a fair question video? That's going to be coming out today. I'm really, really, really excited about this one. It's something that you guys ask all the time. All the time. I get this I get this question more than probably anything else. Um, or I also get the, you guys, you all think you're funny when you go, you're wearing a Russian suit. Shouldn't you be the everyday cosmonaut? No. No. Just because you're wearing a Russian suit does not mean that you're a cosmonaut. Hence... Since 2011 or anytime anyone's flown from any other country on a Russian Soyuz, doesn't make them a cosmonaut. When a U.S. astronaut, Scott Kelly, for instance, when he rides up, uh, when he rode up to the International Space Station on a Soyuz a few times, it didn't make him a cosmonaut. He's still an astronaut. So the country of origin is uh, what deems your... Um, your nomenclature. So I would still be the everyday astronaut even if I was wearing... Uh, a Plutonian spacesuit made by the people of Pluto, which I assume there are. Yeah, so now you know. Now, whenever someone says that in the chat, you guys can all go, he's from the U.S., he'd be an astronaut for me. That'd be great. I can employ you guys to all do that. Um, yeah, every day, yeah, that's true. Why can't they just all be astronauts? That's a great question. Um, Falcon Heavy versus New Glenn. Uh, Falcon Heavy is super cool because you get to see three, potentially three boosters land. So that's fun. Uh, New Glenn's going to be amazing though too. Uh, New Glenn is probably, guys, by the way, I think, because I don't think New Glenn has any, they don't have any desire, I don't think, to ever expend the New Glenn vehicle. And I th believe they're quoting near 30,000 kilograms, which is about what the Falcon Heavy reusable can do. So that means I think the New Glenn will be about as capable as the Falcon Heavy, which is awesome. So we'll see. <laughs> Duh, comrade. <laughs> Thank you, three-sided coin. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, BFR versus New Glenn. Those two are different. Um, yeah, those two are different. Um, totally different classes of vehicles. BFR is much... That's like a super heavy lift vehicle. New Glenn's a, a heavy lift launch vehicle. Medium plus to heavy lift. All right, so I think we're um, we're gonna wait here. We have tw we have 13 minutes. We have to finish our Kerbal Space Program creation of this, which I think uh, we just have to do. We are we are waiting for the the drogue shoots to officially deploy, and then we're gonna pop out our mains. And then we're going to softly land using those retro thrusters that it has that it just burns right before touchdown. It just will light that up. I got to make sure I don't accidentally light this guy up, uh, this big abort motor, because that would be bad. Then we'd probably accidentally kill everyone. We don't want to do that. So the F in BFR is Falcon. Of course it is. Read between the lines. Uh, yeah, BFR obviously comes from... Oh, sorry. Uh, thank you, uh, Real Idrid, in our, in our Discord channel for noticing. I did miss that. Thank you. Uh, Richard, thank you for your tip. How do you think Elon is proposing to reduce the transit time to Mars to three months, ion or electric? It doesn't actually require... Um, 
any advanced propulsion just takes a big rocket with a lot of delta v. All it is is a delta v equation. Um, yeah, you're right because uh, uh, Gwen Shotwell in her TED talk mentioned that she thinks they can get with the BFR BFS to Mars in a matter of three months. And what it requires to do that, um, luckily you can aero capture and aero break around Mars. That means you can use Mars's atmosphere to slow down. So you really you just got to sling yourself there uh, pretty quickly. And you have to do it um, at a time when you're pork chop, when you're lined up um, a little bit more. I'm going to deploy the mains now. Um, it also means you have to... Um, these wouldn't all normally come out at the same time, but for some reason they aren't coming out right. So I'm doing these one at a time. Oopsies. I don't know what I just did there. We're going to cut these guys, though, the, the little drogues. Goodbye. Goodbye. And goodbye. So basically, you can get to Mars um, very quickly using non... Ooh, those haven't fully deployed yet, have they? This is interesting. I hope they do. I hope they deploy. There we go. Okay. So yeah, so you can get to Mars a lot quicker than six to nine months. You just have to do it at a point where you're closer, which means it's actually, so normally you want to go, I think almost 90 degrees or, or 45 degrees or whatever it is uh, in your orbits and then line up so that when you're lined up, boop, it's really efficient. But you can actually squeeze that by um, doing it and, and get it down to about three months. It just takes more delta V and it has that option. Um, all right, so here we go. We have to time this just perfectly. Oh God, where's my suicide time impact? Okay, get ready. I'm gonna hit the space bar button right before it touches down, hopefully. Three, two, one, now. Oh, a little too soon, but that's kind of what it's gonna do. Hey, that was close. There we go, we brought them back safe. Yeah. There we go. We did it, we did a thing. We did a thing. Um, this is correct, Ali Stroll in our Discord. If you're going there faster, you're assuming it would take more arrow breaking um, a lot. You need to arrow break a lot more aggressively or slow down with more fuel. This is correct. That is exactly right. Um, they can do that. You can basically the big thing is you would need to come in and you would need to be able to if, if it can survive the re-entry of an Earth, uh, Earth's re-entry, it can it can pretty easily survive the the atmosphere on mars it's one percent that of earth so even if you're going crazy fast there's just not as much pressure which also means though that you don't have as much aerodynamic forces to slow you down with either so as it hits mars it would have to probably get pretty low in its initial pass to definitely be able to get it into orbit it would probably do what looks like a skipping maneuver where it you know goes through once makes sure it's slow enough to be in orbit and then come back and actually land on the second pass something like that um um Okay, oh, I like that. Yeah, Beast Blocks. Hey, thank you, Philip James. I like when I like Discord. You guys are kind of helping me make sure I, I get the good questions. Um, I did destroy the booster, by the way, uh, a dolphin. We need to redo this launch in order to actually make the uh, booster survive. Apparently, we didn't have a big enough probe core on it. So that was my bad. Um, but I do like this question. Um, a, a good question is, what's my opinion on space junk right now? Kessler syndrome, basically. Um I personally, I don't fear space junk is, I think it's a lot of it is people just making clickbaity articles because really space junk, yes, the little bits of debris are a big concern. I do think, you know, we should not be using pyrotechnics in space. We should not be separating spacecraft with pyrotechnics. SpaceX specifically does a really, really, really good job of not leaving anything in space that shouldn't be there. Um, that's why they use... Um, basically springs to do uh, spacecraft separation events. They do not use pyrotechnics. They use hydraulics and pushers um, and things like that, which um, uh, which is, I, I think, really important. But the, as far as like spacecraft being debris, they're pretty easy to track large, ob large objects. They're, if they're in orbits and they're in their correct orbital plane, it's, it's really easy for us to know where blah, 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 X, Y, and Z is in space. We don't really have that big of a space junk problem in that sense. That being said, the little pieces of debris I'm worried about, but those, especially in low Earth orbit, will deorbit relatively quickly because there is some small, small, small bits of atmosphere up there that slowly deorbit pieces like that. Um, but yeah, it's not as big of a concern if we continued, if it kind of like greenhouse gases, you know, um, 
if we had not even remotely paid attention and continued to burn, you know, especially like really, really had vehicles that all got five miles to the gallon and stuff, we'd be pretty well screwed by now. Right. And we may have caught it before it's too late. Um, and, you know, I think in 50 years, we're going to laugh at the idea that we used fossil fuels instead of renewable energy. It's that same type of thing. Um, people, companies are starting to pay attention to space junk. They're start, starting to use non-explosive, non-pyrotechnic ways of, of separating spacecraft and things in space to keep space junk to a minimum. Upper stages are, are especially by, I know SpaceX deorbits their upper stages or puts them into a junkyard orbit so they actually get them out of Earth's orbit um, and send them out basically into just deep space. Yeah. Now you know. Am I planning on live streaming Insight? Yes, I will be right now. I am absolutely going to live stream Insight. And thank you for your tip. And by the way, make sure you see my first episode of Spacing Out on Facebook because we actually got into the clean room to see Insight. And I was stood three feet from it. And it was awesome. It is so cool. I'm so excited to see it launch knowing that I was right there uh, and could have reached out and touched it if I wouldn't have got the biggest slap in the face. I had done that. Um, yeah, I am. I'm a big fan of the Insight rover or lander. Sorry, not rover. It's a lander. Don't want to say that wrong. Okay, so is this thing? What's this thing? Okay, we need a, a better probe core for. Um, this is what confuses me so much about stupid whatchamacallit. avionics procedural. Here we go. We'll just do this. I'm just gonna make this thing big and wide. We'll make it this, f oh, I probably could be doing this, 3.3, tonnage, 40 ton, what? Why is it stuck at 40 ton? Hmm. It's barely using, what? What? Sorry guys, I don't know anything about this stuff. I'm going to do two of these because I don't know how heavy this thing is. 60 tons altogether. So we have two of these that do 40, right? Is that what they said? 40 ton. Okay, so hopefully the two of them is fine. I don't want to lose another one of these boosters this time. Okay. I'm going to put the parachutes also on an action group. Um, we don't need that anymore. So let's do... Deploy shoot, two is going to be cut that shoot and deploy these shoots. Okay, let's do this again while we're waiting. How much more time do we have? We have like five minutes until the live stream starts, basically. Is the BFR super heavy class? It, yeah, I don't know what it'll actually be classified as. Um, Philip James, let me see this one here. Uh, by Dim Sum. Tim, when SpaceX and Blue Origin do manned flights, who will provide the astronauts? Will they have to train on their own? That's kind of up in the air right now, I think. Um, currently, uh, when SpaceX and Boeing, when they start sending commercial crew for the commercial crew program uh, for NASA, those are NASA astronauts. Training, uh, they have to train on the hardware just like they would if they were training for a space shuttle or something like that. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to tell. Um, but in the future going forward, it'll probably be a private training scenario. Just like Blue Origin, actually, even with their tourism, I think you have to spend a full day out there training before you actually go on your suborbital flight, which is interesting. You can't just go out there and hop on. So that's interesting. Um, <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, David Plant, thank you. SpaceX charging NASA 50% more for CRS missions. I need to see all the numbers on that. I think that's a little misleading. I don't think that's entirely uh, entirely true. I, I think it's a little more uh, nuanced than that. Um, also, guys, I'm going to make sure that made me nervous when I was doing the, um, the touchdown procedure. I want to make sure those little baby engines are on their own at action group. Oops. Find those little engines. Make sure that they fire. No, where is it? Hello? What? Get in. Ugh. Don't be cabbage. Oh, there they are. I saw it for one second. Uh-huh. Aha. Uh -huh. No. Get in. Uh, it'd probably be a lot easier if I just did this. 
sound effects, you know, those are on me. You guys are welcome. Let me know if that live stream goes live. Hopefully we hear it too. I am ready for them. I am done trying to entertain you. All you people and your entertainment needs. Ugh. Come on. Why? Why? Please, just do your job. Why is this not able to select? Okay, let's try this one more time. Why? Well, maybe I won't. Oh, here we go. Did I? Yes! Aha! Gotcha! Okay. Let's finish this up. Let's get this baby back into space. Uh, my opinion on Amazon versus Blue Origin in importance. Well, Jeff Bezos seems to think that Blue Origin is more important than Amazon. I, too, think uh, in 50 years, I think Blue Origin will be the, the more important of the two companies for sure. Like, like, not just what I think. I think just factually speaking, I think it'll be the bigger company. And thank you for your tip. All right. Um, I'm going to try this quick. Let's see if this thing will do it. All right. If I had to visit the ISS, would I choose Starliner or Dragon 2? I think you can guess which one I would choose. Pretty big fan of that Dragon capsule. Sorry, I probably just ruined all your headphones and stuff. I won't do that again. All right. We have how much more time? Hopefully 40 seconds. Let's get this thing up in the air. All right. Systems check. We're looking good. RCS is good. Everything else is good. Landing gear, good. Check. And throttle up, and here we go, guys. In three, two, one, hip, hip. Such a slow climb at first. All right. You're making a lunar colony and Kerbal space program. Great. Um. <laughs> Has, let me know if it starts. <laughs> Finally, it's happening. It's happening, guys. We have a we have a video. It's there. It is. Just like we're doing in Kerbal. We don't need to play Kerbal anymore, guys. I do honestly really, really love this launch vehicle. I love its ring at the top and how it tapers and they use that as a Good control morning, surface. Everyone. Okay. We're live from Blue Origin's West Texas launch site for an amazing eighth mission in our New Shepard test program. My name is Ariane Cornell and I'm very happy to be your host this morning. I want to start off with a special hello to our Blue Origin team at our Kent headquarters in Washington. There's the Kent cam, very happy to see you guys. Uh, Cape Canaveral, Florida, Arlington, Virginia, and of course the whole team that is out here for our launch in West Texas. All right, so uh, we started this morning, uh, Mother Nature threw us a couple of thunderstorms, but they have all cleared, and the wind looks like it's holding for a beautiful launch in 15 minutes here. All right, so let's talk about today's launch. Again, it's the eighth mission in our New Shepard test flight program. It's the second time that we'll have payload customers on board the rocket. And the rocket itself, the booster, it is the third tail and the second capsule, but the capsule, the first capsule with the windows. And so this is the second time that we're flying both sets of hardware. Very exciting, trying to show that we can reuse rockets. Last but not least, we're going to be testing the system, pushing the envelope on the system. We're going to be taking the capsule up to 350,000 feet. Normally speaking, we aim for about 330,000 feet, which is 100 kilometers, or the Kármán line, so the internationally recognized line of space. But today, we're going to push the system a little bit harder. All right, moving on. I want to thank our customers that are on board today. Uh, we've got some team members that are down here in West Texas, but we also have some that are watching from around the world because we have some international customers. Thank you very much. We know that you guys and your experiments are going to enjoy some beautiful clean G's that only New Shepard can give you. Also, somebody else is going to be enjoying those clean G's. 
Mannequin Skywalker. There he is out for his second flight to space. Sweet. Lucky him. You know, he actually is going to be conducting uh, astronaut telemetry and science studies for us, which is a very important job. Uh, I just want it noted that I am uh, extraordinarily jealous of Mannequin Skywalker. In fact, I would swap seats with him in a middle in the in a, just a second here but let's be honest he'd be a lame commentator uh and so i think we're going to keep our respective roles for today what do you guys think but seriously though uh the fact that we've got mannequin skywalker on board for a second time today is really important it means that we're one step closer to flying humans into space to getting customers on board yeah when all right Tell let's us when. get into the mission itself the uh, upon liftoff, the capsule and the booster are going to launch up to about 250,000 feet or 75 kilometers together. The capsule is going to continue up over the Kármán line, but again today we're going to be pushing the system. We're aiming for 350,000 feet above ground level. The capsule will then come down under three parachutes for a nice soft landing just in the last milliseconds. We do have that retro thrust system at the base of the capsule kicks up a lot of dust down here in Texas, but I promise you it is a nice soft landing, just about one or two miles an hour. The booster itself also comes down, of course, it's actually gonna beat the capsule uh, because of its aerodynamic shape. At about 3,000 feet or so, we're gonna relight that BE-3 engine, as well as put down the retractable uh, landing legs for a nice soft landing. All right, at Blue Origin, you've probably heard of this before, Gradatum ferociter, in Latin it means step-by-step step ferociously. That is our motto, and of course that is the way that we think of our test program here at, uh, at Blue Origin. So today is no different. We are going to be taking the next step. We're going to be pushing that crew capsule to 350,000 feet. Again, that is uh, much higher than our uh, normal uh, apogee that we aim for at about 330,000 feet or 100 kilometers over that Kármán line. Uh, if you're just joining us, we're at T-minus 10 minutes to go to launch for a beautiful liftoff. There she is. New Shepard looking good on the pad. Yay. This is the second time that we're going to be uh, reusing this, uh, this hardware. That is the second flight for the rocket, the second flight for this capsule, which has the windows on it, of course. And it is the second time that we'll have commercial payload customers on board. Yay. I love this vehicle, guys. It is really cool. Those are the biggest windows in space. And some beautiful shots of the rocket. And of course, honing in on those big windows. Let's talk about the hardware for just a moment here. So the windows, uh, there are six windows, six seats, six windows. So when you come flying with us, everybody's going to get a window view. Uh, awesome. They are fracture tough, multi paned acrylic. We've done extensive pressure testing of them on the ground. And of course, also in space, as we uh, demonstrated during our last flight in back in December. And I'm very happy to report that they performed perfectly. Uh, also, a feature important. of these windows they transmit over 90% of visible light. So when you are up over the Kármán line, floating about like, uh, like you see here in the images, you're gonna get some extraordinary views of space, the limb of the earth. You're gonna see the, the contrast of the darkness of space versus the colors of earth. It's gonna be spectacular. See this center thing, guys? This is the solid rocket booster. It's sitting right there in the middle of the vehicle. I think that's crazy. So that's their abort solid rocket motor. So it looks like a table or something, but it's actually All right, so that's what the gets them out of there. Let's talk a little a bit problem. about this rocket. So you see the ring fin there. That's what the crew capsule sits on top of as it blasts off towards space. But the ring fin actually does a lot of work as the booster is coming back into land. So as the air is flowing through the ring fin, it centralizes the pressure and it helps with the stability of the rocket. Also supporting the stability of the rocket. You see those two slots there. There are two more on the other side. Those are our forward fins. Uh, those deploy upon descent. And then you see the outlines there of two of the drag brakes. There are two on each quadrant. Those pop out, cut the velocity, in fact, in half, of course, before we turn on the BE-3 engine for a nice soft landing on the landing pad, which is just about 
two miles north of where the rocket launches from. Moving down to the aft section of the rocket, you see here the BE-3 engine poking out there. You see the nozzle. You, of course, see the aft fins uh, to support the directional capability of the rocket. And also, you see one of the landing gear. Uh, there are four landing gear that deploy just before it lands. I love those landing gear. They look so Talk in a moment virus. about that BE-3 engine. Uh, really incredible uh, liquid propulsion uh, engineering that we do so at cool. Blue Origin. I love watching these uh, these last flights because you get to see just how softly the rocket comes into land, how precisely, and that's because this There's rocket engine no people on it, it maxes at 110,000 pounds of thrust upon liftoff, but it can come down to 20,000 pounds of thrust. So it's kind of like a commercial jetliner as it comes into land. The pilot pulls back on the throttle for a nice soft landing and that's exactly as you can see on your screen what we do with the new shepherd's engine we pull it back we've got the entire range and it comes into land for a nice soft landing obviously the the booster itself uh, has much less propellant because it's burnt it on the way down excuse me on the way up so on the way down it's a lot lighter we don't need all the thrust so we bring it in for a nice soft this might landing. be a built-in hold everybody but at we'll that see. stability we'll see also if I hear one more phallic joke, guys, come on, grow up. All right, we all so know. we are at about T minus seven Let minutes to go before launch. We're in a bit of a hold here. Uh, that is normal. We want to make sure that our teams are aligned, that all the subsystems are ready to go, and also that the weather is, uh, is within bounds for New Shepard. Uh, as mentioned this morning, we had some thunder showers pass through the area. Uh, the winds uh, are... Uh, are fluttering about out there uh, but we just want to make sure that everything is set to go for new shepherd you might also oh, know resume. we also want to make sure that the winds aloft are also within bounds so again all of this is uh is normal while we are uh actually i just understand that we are out of a hold we're at t minus six hold. minutes and 30 seconds if you so, died as you get noted, a uh, at blue origin our mission is to have millions of people living and working in space. And the only way that you do that is by making uh, access to space open to as many people as possible. And that's how we've designed our astronaut experience with Blue Origin, which means also the training. So let's talk a little bit about the training. Uh, so if you all were gonna come flying with us today, it's Sunday, you would have landed in West Texas on Friday afternoon. So sort of these beautiful shots of the valley from which oh, we launched here like in West Westworld. Texas. You would have met the, your other five crew members, uh, as well as uh, what we call crew member seven. That is the man or woman that is going to be training you. So the next day, on the Saturday, you would have gone through a uh, full, intense, but fun day of training, where we cover, of course, the mission profile. We cover egress, how to get into the rocket. Uh, excuse me, ingress, how do you get into the rocket? Egress, how do you get out of the rocket? We go over emergency procedures. We want to make sure that everybody feels comfortable with the flight. And we cover uh, everybody's favorite, what we call zero-G etiquette. Uh, what does that mean? It means when you're up over uh, the, the Carmen line and you're floating about, we want to make sure that you, uh, you're able to control yourself. You don't need as much force when you're up there floating about. So we want to prepare you so that Again, you and your, uh, your crewmates can enjoy the flight as much as possible. Uh, then the next day, the time for uh, a flight of a lifetime, you'll lift off. You're going to enjoy three Gs on the way up there, on the way up towards space. We'll let you unbuckle, of course, at Apogee. You'll gaze out of those windows and maybe turn some somersaults like our friend there in the video. After the four minutes, we're gonna ask you to get back into your seats. You will rebuckle come down under the three parachutes. And as noted, just in the last milliseconds, we fire that retro thrust system. Kicks up a lot of dust down here in Texas. We're constantly shining up our boots. Uh, but you, you could come in for a nice landing at one or two miles an hour. Oh, they didn't even there show it, it. Soft landing, but raucous celebration. Uh, but when you come fly with Blue Origin, that is not where it ends. We are gonna make sure that our customers that fly with New Shepard 
get the opportunity. The, the, they get first dibs on tickets on New Glenn, which is our orbital rocket, will be, which will be flying by the end of 2020. So eventually we'll be flying people on New Glenn, which is really exciting. That's awesome. In fact, I don't think I've heard that just yet. getting in a human space flight with, with New Shepard, uh, I feel like I can taste it. We're, we're marching there progressively step by step. Uh, it's going to be uh, an incredible opportunity for everybody. I don't know about you, but it, in fact, has been a dream of mine since I've been a little girl. I do not like that sound, I'll tell you that. All right, you're joining us live. We are at T minus three Beautiful minutes day. and 20 seconds left to launch. Coming to you Let's from West Texas, we're looking forward to the eighth launch of the new in the New Shepard test flight program. It is the uh, second time that we'll be flying this rocket and this capsule in particular. It is also the second time that we'll have payload customers on board. And last but not least, we will be pushing the system. We want to see that capsule go up to 350,000 feet above ground level, normally speaking. We fly the rocket over the Kármán line, the internationally recognized line of space. Their hold. That's about 100 kilometers, or about 330,000 feet. So as we've noted before, step-by-step step ferociously, that's how we plan our test program as well, and today is no exception. All right, we have entered into a brief hold here. Again, just want to make sure that our teams are aligned and that the weather is all set to go for New Shepard's flight to space. Hold is off, yes. I can't wait. I want this thing to fly right now. So, guys, 2020, New Glenn, absolutely. They're really far. They have the facility out there, guys. It's it's going to happen. I have no doubt that by 2020, they'll be flying New Glenn. Um, so, I'm not sure why people kind of laughed at that. That's very much so happening. That sound's getting louder. Hello? I, would, I think that's live audio from there, I'm guessing. Um, again, also, guys, no more phallic jokes. Just, we don't need that. We've heard it a thousand times. You're definitely not the first to think that. All right, three-sided coin, thoughts on Bigelow. What other, are other sta space station builders? Um, so, uh, Bigelow definitely probably is the furthest along. They have inflatable HAB modules that they already have one small version up connected to the International Space Station. Um... And uh, so that's pretty cool. They also have the BA-330, I think, which is this huge HAB module that I really can't wait for them to send up to space someday. Um, Bigelow is awesome. There's also another company. I forget who it is. Uh, I think they'll be on the YouTube show tomorrow, T-M-R-O, right. on Saturday. Thank you, everybody, so we'll learn more. for your patience. We have come out of the hold. Thank God they turned Countdown that sound down. Countdown clock resumes. We're at T-minus 2 minutes and 20 seconds. Looks like we may have gone into another hold again this is all normal you know we recognize that here at blue we spend years designing this rocket we spend you know, months designing and preparing for these missions hours getting her ready and that's why in the last minutes if we need to take a little bit more time to make sure that we're all set to go it's absolutely worth it yep don't want green we don't want go fever that's when you're anxiously ready to push that launch button. They want to make sure everything's perfect. I respect that. Definitely. We can all wait minutes, all right, we hours, have days. The hold. We're at T minus doesn't matter. two minutes to doesn't go. Matter to us. At this point, at T minus two minutes is when we basically throw the show over to the rocket. It's an autonomous system. So at that point, it starts to go through all its checks on its own. At this point though, We've gone into another brief hold. Again, just want to make sure that the rocket's set to go, weather's set to go, and our team is set to go. Yeah, I, I don't know what that noise is. I think that's it, when they started pulling up this live feed While is when that sound came. we have a second here, I want to, came. again, send a, a special thank you to our payload customers that are on board today. This is the second time that we're, uh, that we're flying payload customers. Uh, they come to us, in fact, from around the world. I should note, that's one of my favorite things about working here at Blue. When we say that we're opening up space, we're opening up space for everybody. Millions of people living and working in space, this is gonna be a global effort, everybody. I hope so. 
I think space is hopefully going to be safe enough to be open for everybody. I think so. Uh, would they offer a free trip on a test rocket, but no guarantee you'd make it back? No, not at all. I want... I have a lot more life to live than... Uh, that sound is terrible. I really hope they can get rid of that soon. Um, it's definitely... When they switched cameras, it got worse. That's weird. I hope they find that and cut it, please. It's so bad. But yeah, I, I would absolutely not do that. Um, I want the safest launch vehicle ever. There's just... Maybe when I'm like 70 and I've lived... And as Thank much life as I can. Again, for staying with us, we are there. at T minus one down. minute and fifty-eight seconds. We are in a hold here as our systems get ready to go. Again, this is the eighth <laughs> test mission in our New Shepard test program. We are pushing the envelope today. We want to go to three hundred fifty thousand feet with this capsule. That is higher than we have ever flown before. Also, we want to give our payload customers. A great ride. Uh, in fact, the way that, that New Shepard works, the profile, the flight profile, gives our payload customers really clean Gs. It goes st basically straight up, straight down. It's a, a tight parabola, which means you get a really nice, clean, let's say, bubble of, of, of clean micro Gs. And that's perfect for our scientific experiments that are in there that really want those clean Gs. The other great thing is they actually uh, can gain access to their payloads relatively quickly. So as soon as we've landed, we get the teams right out there for them to uh, check out their experiments. Uh, Marcus, thank you. Uh, have I heard of the Gateway Spaceport? Uh, yeah, I have. Um, I would definitely consider talking a bit about it and, or maybe making a video. I think I'll need to do some deep rundown on it. I, I should probably do a whole video like all about upcoming future space stations and space hotels. It's a really good question. I'm going to add that to my list right now, which I do. Um, hold on. I have a list. I am organized. Sometimes. Very few times. But on this, I am. So here we go. Um, space stations. All right. I hope they're coming out of that hold soon. There we go. Yeah, this is a longer hold than they've experienced so far. Ooh, that sound went away. Maybe that sound is good. Or maybe they finally just realized it. <laughs> Blue Origin sounds like a Windows right, 95 machine. T minus one I'm glad they found that sound seconds. and got rid of Again, it. Again, we're in a brief hold. Want to make sure that the, uh, the team and the rocket and the weather are all set to go here for the launch. You know, we talked about what it takes to get the rocket prepared and out here on the pad, but let's back up the clock and let's talk about what's happened just a couple of hours ago. Oh. So early in the morning, the we, uh, we roll the rocket out from what we call our vertical processing facility or what we like to call down here, the barn. And we roll it uh, two miles north to, its, uh, to the launch pad. The same, basically the same truck, if you will, uh, that brings the rocket out there also turns the rocket vertical. So we call it our transport director. We then, of course, connect all the cabling uh, and all the tubing. We want to make sure uh, that everything is set to go. In the hours leading up to the launch itself, uh, of course, we, uh, we do all the subsystem checks on the rocket. We also, of course, fuel up the rocket, make sure that the pressures are all uh, set to go and, and nominal for the launch itself. Something to note with, uh, with New Shepard, we've actually designed the system for us to be able to uh, roll out the rocket and roll her back in in only 14 hours. We call it 14 hours barn to barn. So it means we can roll her out, launch her, land her, recover the rocket and the capsule, and bring it back to the vertical processing facility in only 14 hours. Wow. And the kicker is that we do it with only 30 people. If you think back to historic, uh, rocket missions, cool. they were doing this with hundreds of people, thousands of people, and we do it with 30 people. Building that efficiency into the system, into the operations, is something that we thought about from the very beginning when designing New Shepard. <laughs> because with that efficiency, of course, comes lower costs. And we want to make sure that we're pushing those lower costs down to our customers. Because, again, the key to opening up space for everybody is uh, lowering the cost of access to space, both for the, the payloads, the infrastructure, 
as well as the people. And so that is what we're doing with New Shepard. And of course, what we'll also be doing with New Glenn, our orbital rocket, which again is set to launch by the end of 2020. Yes, I want we're that. We're taking a lot of the lessons from New Shepard and we're rolling them into New Glenn as we speak, especially I should say uh, for the first stage of New Glenn, uh, the New Glenn rocket will be a two-stage rocket, and the first stage will come into land, and so these same uh, design elements go into the first stage of New Glenn. All right, so three-sided coin, what experiments Thank can be completed? Thank you, for joining us again. We are at T-minus 1 minute crazy, 58 to be honest, but... seconds. You're watching live from West Texas on the brink of another exciting test launch of our New Shepard rocket. We're in a brief hold before launch here. Again, just want to make sure that our teams are aligned and that the weather is within bounds for a nice flight up to space and back, of course, for both our rocket and the capsule. Okay, so they do get four minutes of weightlessness, of, of, of microgravity, or of zero G. And that's enough time to do some small experiments. So one of them, I think, is um, a, ca a little, there's a little thing in there with uh, different, they're going to kind of shoot different gases in, nitrogen, oxygen, um, things like that, and, and see how they kind of form and interact with each other. And you only need, you know, a little bit of time, but you need that clean micro G. You need that clean zero G uh, in order to really see how those react in space. So they can do these little quick experiments like this. Uh, really easily, really cheaply on a rocket like this compared to trying to send it up on the International Space Station. If it only takes four minutes of microgravity to, to learn something, that's all you need. Why send it all the way up on the ISS, which is crazy expensive. So, yeah. Um. <laughs> I like that. ULA, they have the VIF, the, the Vehicle Integration Facility. NASA, the VAB, Vehicle Assembly Building. SpaceX, the HIF, Horizontal Integration Facility. Blue Origin, Barn. I like that though. I like that. So, by the way, guys, this hold the H number. It's them just having to wait and us waiting. And I know your probably your patience is growing. Your impatience is growing, and I understand. But we don't. This is an expensive vehicle, an expensive launch facility. It's not worth them ever pushing the boundaries or trying to do something outside of what's nominal. Um, this is showing maturity. This is a, a mature vehicle, a mature company. That's 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 looking to do what's best it's not something to play around with this is a, a even though it's relatively small like 15 meters tall 45 50 feet tall around there i'm not exactly sure how tall um it's still a really powerful vehicle over a hundred thousand pounds of thrust um it's you know they don't want to risk anything this is that's not what you do in space flight um th as we you know push the boundaries of commercial space and getting tourists into space and eventually people into orbit. There's a difference between this suborbital stuff and orbital space flight, but just even if they can sell these tickets relatively cheap, which I still haven't heard the price of, I can't wait to hear that. Um, they they can't, you can't risk it. You can't, you, you can't risk it. So I'll wait, I'll wait an hour, I'll wait two hours, I'll wait two days, I don't care. I just want this to go well. Um, that's really what matters in the long run. And so um, those of you saying, hurry up, hurry up, Guys, really? I mean, who cares? What, do you, what else are you doing on a Saturday, huh? Or sun? What is today? Sunday, huh? Nothing. You're not doing anything. Just, we'll just wait. We'll watch us together. So, um, yeah. So that H number that you're seeing climb, that is how long they've been in a hold period for. So it's almost up to ten minutes. Um, I'm guessing they might just scrub and pull the launch at some point if it goes too high and they don't actually reset the T zero. The T-minus clock. So, we'll see. <clears throat> we will see. We're in Texas. It's West Texas. I'm not entirely sure. Um, yeah. We'll see. <laughs> well, um, LI7 in 6. Uh, I actually, yeah, I've never seen... I, I don't know if this is a joke for you or not, but I'll treat it as factually... I would also like to see them erect the rocket. Um, I don't know if I've actually seen footage of how they take it out horizontally from their barn and how they stand it up. Um, I would like to see that. 
insert don't insert jokes because we all know it, we all know guys we all know um so by the way these small holds i think it's just that you know they're waiting for things to clear out you know maybe weather maybe there's a, a valve or something i don't know we don't have any more information um and I, obviously they didn't plan on holding um but it's smart that they are why yeah why why push um you can hear some wind gusts yeah yes guys we get it also guys you don't need to insert your opinion on whether spacex is better or blue origin it doesn't matter it doesn't matter this vehicle in particular you can't compare this to the falcon 9 that's not fair um it's an entirely different vehicle entirely different purpose it's massively impressive um Yes, I l obviously you guys know I love the Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, I love SpaceX. Um, but we don't need to sit here and go, oh, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They're both doing awesome things. These are billionaires investing their own private money into spaceflight. That's awesome. Period. I don't care. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear about the Falcon 9 is so much bigger and better. Falcon 9's awesome! It's great! This thing's great! It does really cool things! It's going to be sending people above the Carmen line. They get to see... They get to witness, you know, experience four minutes of weightlessness and hopefully at the lowest price ever available. And available, period, because so far, uh, no offense to Virgin Galactic, they've had a hard time getting their program up and running for tourists, despite having a lot of people, uh, ticket holders for that. I just want this to go well, so, and I want their new Glenn, their, their big, really big rocket, seven meters wide. Um, it's almost, I mean, that thing's almost the size of the Saturn V. It's going to be huge. Um, I want to see that thing fly. I want them to do well. Um, I, this is for all of us, guys. This is, this is, we don't have to cheer for one or the other. We can cheer for them all. It's not, I hate, why is it, why is there a Ford versus Chevy? Why? They're just cars. They're car companies. Who cares? Why? Oh! Are we out of the hold? No! They just reset the hold clock. <laughs> I got excited for a second. Hey! They're back down! Here we go, guys. No! <laughs> this is terrible. Now you're torturing me. Now I'm going to take back all the nice things I said. Just kidding. Uh, we'll wait patiently. No, stop doing this! Oh... Love my live streams. Thank you. Two launches today. What a treat. Wait, what else is launching today? Is there a Soyuz or something happening? Um, I don't know of another launch today. I hope I'm not missing something. I don't do all launches, guys, yet. Um, there will be another video from, from me today, though. Oh, there's a long, a long march. No, I don't know what else. We'll see, guys. We'll see. So... This is just, yeah, this is the pre-programmed hold for the hold. <laughs> yeah, I don't, uh, but also thank you, um, Technotron. Um, again, you will see a video from me today. I uh, have it done. It's uploaded onto YouTube. I just haven't had the time to, to post it. I, I always do all the subtitles and everything. Um, forget SpaceX versus Blue Origin. More smaller engines or less bigger? That's a great question. Thank you, Three Sided Coin. That is a really good question. I personally am a really big fan of a lot of small engines. All right, um, thanks everybody for staying ooh. with us here. We're at T minus one minute and 55 seconds. We continue to be in a bit of a hold here. I understand it's going to be a little bit of a longer hold, but that's okay. We want to take advantage of this opportunity to tell you a little bit more about New Glenn. Ooh, so one of the reasons we'll why we test New Shepard and test her a lot is because, as noted, we're going to roll those lessons uh, into the design of New Glenn. So if you think about it, it's a, it's a subscale for that program as well. So let's go into what New Glenn looks like. We've got a great animation here Ooh, a new T of New Glenn. You see those people there for scale? This is going to be a very big rocket, and when I say big rocket, 313 feet tall uh, and 23 wow. feet in diameter. That's also seven feet in diameter. So it meters. also means that our payload seven fairing, meters. we're gonna be able to car carry that much more in there, twice as much capacity, volume capacity as anything else that are on the market. We're gonna be flying this rocket 
out of Cape Canaveral, Florida. Uh, as noted, that first stage is going to come back down and land. That's, again, the subscale element, let's say, of, uh, of how uh, New Shepard is the subscale of New Glenn. This two-stage rocket is going to launch. The first stage is powered by seven BE-4 engines. Uh, that's 550,000 pounds of thrust per engine. The BE-4, 3.85 million pounds of thrust on liftoff. Two BE-3Us, upper stage variants of the BE-3, will power the second stage. The first stage, when it comes back to land, you see that center engine will relight. And it actually comes into land on a moving ship. Why do we like ships? We like the moving ship because it's actually more stable uh, than, uh, than a barge out there, which means that uh, we can actually launch and land in higher sea states, uh, and which it means that we can have a, a reliable, a more reliable schedule for our customers uh, when they come fly with us. We actually currently uh, have uh, eight launches already accounted for by our uh, wow. New Glenn customers. Uh, looking forward to, uh, in particular, we just uh, announced two more customers, Sky Perfect JSAT and MuseSpace. We announced that satellite 2018 just a couple of months ago. Thank you again to them. Looking forward to flying you just a couple of years here. Let's talk a little bit about uh, our facilities down there in, uh, in Cape Canaveral, Florida. That is such a large so rocket big. that we've decided to build the rocket not far from where we launch it. So uh, as the crow flies, as we say, uh, it's about eight or nine miles from the manufacturing facility to the kilometers. launch complex. Moving from left to right, basically what we do is we take the raw materials in and out the other end comes a rocket. Again, a very large rocket means a very large facility, 750,000 square feet. It's also our mission control center, which we've put there in one of the corners. Uh, and so we can do everything from that facility. Now, once the rocket is complete, we take the rocket to the launch complex, Launch Complex 36. It's a former Atlas pad. We are basically completely redoing the pad for our large rocket. At that complex, we're going to have the integration facility where we integrate the encapsulated payload with the completed rocket. It's also, of course, you see there on the right side uh, where that crane is, that's going to be essentially where the uh, launch tower is. You see the, uh, uh, the propellant farm going in. There's a lot of LNG that is needed, liquefied natural gas for the BE-4s. Uh, so there's going to be hmm. a lot of propellant Look tanks there. Also at that launch complex, we'll be putting a refurbishment facility where we re we're going to refurbish our first oh. stage. Right there, the huh? Glen. Cool. That's awesome. Again, I didn't know coming that. Coming together nicely for New Glenn's maiden flight by the end of 2020. That should be very exciting. All you down there at the Cape, when New Glenn takes off, again, 3.85 million pounds of thrust, you are going to feel it. Uh, it's going to make a rumble, let's yeah. be honest. All right, let's talk a little bit more about those BE 4 engines. Well, Please. underway into testing. We do the engine testing right down here in West Texas, just about a, a mile from where we're sitting here. We have two major test stands, the largest of which is where we test the BE-4. Our first hot fire of the full engine was last October. Subsequently have done a lot more testing on this engine. How much more? Our longest fire, 114 seconds. Uh, we have gone up to 70% power, Wow! Uh, which is very exciting. Not only are uh, we happy with how far we've gotten in the, uh, the power setting, but also in the throttle ability, which we've tested. We noted the importance of the throttle ability on the BE-3 for New Shepard, but it's also very important, of course, as we come to bring into land the, uh, the New Glenn's first stage. We need that same throttle ability for a nice, soft landing. So cool. I love it. I know that we have a lot of uh, questions here from you guys. Um, and I'll get to those I've in a told second. you about how we've got all this Texas dust down here in uh, uh, West Texas at our facility. You can see it also there in the burns uh, at, our, uh, at our test facilities. It gets everywhere. So uh, noted, when you see the crew capsule come back to land today, it's going to kick up the dust with the retrothrust system, but that is a good thing. It means that our uh, 
uh, the, the landing cushion, if you will, is working properly. Uh, it gives a nice soft landing for our customers. I hear and of a lot of stuff today, in the background. The Mannequin Skywalker, who is on board for his second flight to space. All right, we are at T minus one minute yes. and 20 seconds to go here before Finally. launch. We are out this. of our holds. Sweet. Thank you for joining us. Again, this is the eighth launch of this test program. You see the rocket going through its aft fin checks. Awesome. We're actually in T minus one going finally. To do a gimbal check. We want to make sure it's got free range do this. of motion. It's important as we guide the rocket up, but of course down to land softly on our landing pad. There it is, gimbaling. Do you see that? They can do that pretty quick, by the way. It can actually. All like, right. Once we get under one minute, with every tick of the clock going this down, this is gonna be my loud. I think they have. Faster. They have their mics Nothing way like a too cranked. To do that to you. <laughs> it's gonna peak so bad. Free range All of right. emotions. It's time to hand it over to Mission Control and listen in on the final countdown. Countdown. It is go I'm time, gonna, New Shepard. Answer your questions later, guys. I'm sorry about this. We haven't had a time. We've been learning a lot. Guidance to internal. Here we go. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Command engine start. 2, 1. Oh, yes. All right. I was nervous there. It sat there for a second. That engine rumble. Mission Control has confirmed New Shepard has cleared the tower on its way to space from the West Texas desert. <laughs> She's excited. That's awesome. She should be. This is cool. I remember this is just suborbital, so it's All right, to go our up. Alright, first milestone here, as you can down. see on the left side of your screen, we're going to hit max Q. That's the point where aerodynamic stresses on the vehicle are at its maximum. And then it can throttle back up and accelerate faster. So watch the Max Q confirmed. The speedometer is going to start climbing real fast. You can also follow along on the top right of your screen. Watch New Shepard as she gains speed towards our maximum apogee altitude of 350,000 feet today. Thank you again for joining us live for the eighth mission in this new Shepard test program. Launch is looking nominal from here. Look at that clean burn on the BE-3 engine. 100,000 feet, third of the way there, but they're Our cruising now. Our next milestone is going to be main engine cutoff. We're gonna cut off that BE-3 engine. Main engine cut off in a second, probably right now. And there it goes. All right, Miko confirmed. Main engine cut off confirmed. If you are an astronaut in our capsule at this point, this one you're going to start to feel that weightlessness. Next up, we're going to separate the crew capsule from the booster. There it is. Separation is complete. There goes cool. the booster. So that ring on the way back down acts almost as fins, and it helps the stability of the vehicle. It creates a center of lift that's going to be behind it. Again, kind of like you're watching fins live from West Texas, our eighth mission in this New Shepard test program. We've confirmed separation. In just a moment here, you're going to be able to see the two distinct craft. So it's still going up, remember. But you can start to see they're separating, but the vantage point... You're kind of, it's, 
you know, you're looking up at it so high. I, can't, I actually can't believe they can track it at 330,000 feet away. So we're away. just waiting for Apogee here. You're going to see, we're going to hit Apogee because that's when, in fact, the speed goes to zero. And then, of course, it's going to start to speed up as the craft oh, come okay. back down to land. There you see the two craft, the capsule on your right, the booster on the left. Mannequin Skywalker up there getting some beautiful views. Let's see them. We're not going to let him out of his seat today. But you know he's getting to see the beautiful limb of the earth out of those gorgeous windows. Again, second flight of that crew capsule with the windows. Yeah, um, someone asked and now when... we're awaiting our Apogee call. 347,000 feet. That's pretty good. A beautiful ride so far for the capsule and the booster. Everything is looking nominal. Sweet. So you'd begin experiencing weightlessness at Miko at main engine cutoff. 347,000 feet. Just about 20,000 feet over the Carmen line or 100 kilometers. The internationally recognized line of space. <laughs> Look at it get faster and faster. All right, now the capsule and the booster are racing back home. The capsule is going to land just a bit after the booster. The booster, of course, is more aerodynamically shaped. <laughs> the booster shortly here is going to hit atmospheric pierce point. So that means that's, that's when the control surfaces are actually going to have some air pressure to be able to work against to guide the, the rocket back to its landing pad. So it's starting to hit a little bit of atmosphere now. So now you'll start to see these two vehicles get further and further so apart. So I'm hearing from the control room that we might have actually hit our goal of 350,000 feet, but we will confirm that uh, after the launch. Either way, a beautiful launch so far for the team. Yeah, All right, I don't know why they don't use metric, the guys. Front, uh, excuse me, on the forward section of the oh, rocket well. have deployed. Those, again, are helping the rocket in its stabilization as it comes back in to land. So Shortly here, we're going to have the drag down. brakes deploy, and you can follow along on the right side of your screen and watch how it dramatically cuts the speed of the rocket as it comes here into it comes. land. Starting to hit atmosphere, so it's starting to slow down quite a bit now. Quite a bit. Look at that slow down. Wow. And they haven't even deployed the drag brakes yet but it's just getting into thicker and thicker atmosphere. So you'll see on that ring, these little drag brakes will pop out and that'll slow it down even more. Because right now it's just the boosters out in its own terminal velocity. There's the drag brakes, whoa. And there go that. the drag brakes. And I hope they like that engine Watch soon. that speed come down on the right. <laughs> okay. Whoa, sonic boom from re-entry. Awesome. Oh, we're the sonic boom down here in Texas. Yes, yes. And the light was Oh, yeah. Oh, they make it look easy. Oh, beautiful. And touchdown. Welcome home, yes. New Shepard. Beautiful landing. That was beautiful. All right. That was it's awesome. It's not over, though. All eyes are on the capsule. Look at this that. This is still important. Gorgeous <laughs> this window people there. On it. They just have to deploy parachutes. That's normal stuff. That's easy. This part's easy. All right. So we're first waiting for the drogue chutes to come out. Those are kind of like the guiding parachutes. They are followed shortly by the mains. And after full inflation, the capsule will come in at a nice, steady 15 or 20 miles an hour. I don't see any parachutes yet. Descent. <laughs> uh, hello? 
Oh gosh. I was getting nervous, guys. There go the three drogues. <laughs> Seems kind of late, but I don't know. I don't know when it's supposed to happen. And there go the mains. Wow. And nice, clean inflation. And look how the speed comes down wow. just at about 16 miles an hour. It's like 25 kilometers an hour. And only the view that Mannequin Skywalker has out of those windows as he slowly descends into the valley here in West Texas. So just as a reminder, in the last milliseconds, we're going to have the retro thrust system fire. It's going to kick up the dust, but really the capsule comes in at just about one or two miles an hour. So it's a nice, smooth landing. Soyuz does the same thing. Soyuz does that exact same thing. It has these little retro thrusters that right before impact will scrub off that 18 miles an hour and make it touch down really soft. But you'll see those thrusters kick up a ton of right, dirt, so it will look violent, but it's not. Level. So get ready to see that here any second. Five hundred feet. I'll do it later, corn doggo. Here we go. Oh, cool. Nice drone shot. Don't land on a cactus. Yes. And touch down. Sweet. Beautiful soft landing for our crew capsule. What a beautiful mission down here in West Texas. Woo! Congratulations yeah. to the Blue Origin team. Another yes. spectacular test mission. It looks nominal from here. There is the rocket back on its landing pad in the crew capsule sitting nice and pretty in the West Texas desert. Sweet. What a day. All right, so now our recovery team is preparing landing, safe, landing safety operations and recovery. You know, if you're an astronaut on board the capsule, you get to hang out with your friends for a couple of minutes, <laughs> high five, and just enjoy a few minutes of reflection from your life-changing ride up to space while our team comes to pick you up the adrenaline would be pumping. I know it is still for me down here, <laughs> just having watched that. <sighs> wow. All right. Another Sweet. great mission for our New Shepard team. Again, this was the eighth mission to space in our New Shepard test program. Cool. What a day. All right. We are going to have some statistics from the mission here for you. Max altitude of the capsule, 347,000 feet, although we're going to confirm after the webcast here uh, with our team, the max altitude. Max ascent velocity, 2,200 miles per hour. Mission launch 3, time, 12.06 p.m. Central Daylight Time. And the mission elapsed time, 10 minutes and 19 seconds. All right. On behalf of the hardworking Blue Origin team at Blue Origin, thank you so much for joining us. It's been quite a day for us. If you're interested in learning more about the, uh, the New Shepard program and everything that we're up to at Blue, please go to our website, sign up for our email updates. And until our next exciting launch, Grid Autumn Ferocitor. Awesome. All right. Congrats, Blue Origin. That's awesome. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn their stuff down quick. Just kind of get it off in the background here. So we have a few things to talk about real quick before I head out. I'm really hungry. I've been waiting hours for this. So first off, yeehaw! That's for Corn Doggo. Thank you. Uh, the Hydrolox is deep cryo. Why is there no Lox 2 or, or um, LH2 venting? Uh, it should be fueled up by this close. You're right. I don't know. They vent out the bottom, it looked like. I, I noticed they don't really have the vents on the vehicle up top. I wonder if they actually run hoses to vent way off, way below the vehicle. I, I honestly don't know for sure, um, but that's a great question. Um, not all vehicles are the same, so maybe they just vent off. So, um, yes, I definitely think competition en encourages innovation. Um, Three-sided corn, I need to finish your question. Um, do I think smaller engines or bigger engines? I love the idea of using multiple small engines. Multiple small engines, A, is can be cheap to manufacture because you're continually building 
the same engine over and over and over. Just like it'd be cheaper to build an engine this big compared to an engine the size of my room. Um, you know, this, there is a scale of economies there. There's a scale of um, paying off your your tooling and all your equipment uh, faster by, you know, basically having to create the same engine over and over. So I'm a big fan of that. I'm a big fan of the redundancy of multiple engines and having multi-engine out capabilities. That's awesome. Um, I think it's cool. I, I, I prefer that over one big giant engine. Um, it just seems to make sense to me. So let's see. The other thing I wanted to note, some notes on this. A, I can't believe how late they pull their drogue shoots. That just was surprising to me. I need to watch their other ones and remember if they actually pull them that late always. I don't remember. That just seemed... I was kind of on the edge of my seat hoping we weren't going to see a capsule crash. Uh, we didn't. It looked like a beautiful... looked beautiful timing. I just was surprised. Um, I'm sure it was by design. Um, oh, I need to land the booster in case people were going to lunch. Maybe a dolphin. Maybe. Um, the other thing I wanted to note is they do hover their booster for a long time. Like, a very long time. So all that time spent hovering... Could have been time spent going up a little bit higher, so maybe they'll eventually optimize it more. <clears throat> but it, maybe they don't need to. Who cares, really? Um, they're reaching their goal of getting above the Kármán line, which is 100 kilometers, 62 miles in altitude. Um, as long as they're doing that, who cares how long it hovers? You know, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, that's us just being like, you're not optimizing your performance. Why cut it close? You know, why Why does it matter if it <clears throat> does a really quick, precise hover, uh, you know, a hover slam or suicide burn and scrubs off all that velocity at the very last second like the Falcon 9? Don't forget, they have the ability to hover. This engine can throttle low enough and its thrust to weight ratio is low enough to be able to hover. The Falcon 9 can't do that, which is fine. Um, it, that's just a, a note. That's not like a, that's not a nag against anyone. That's just a note. Um, the Falcon 9's, even with... Nine of its, eight of its nine engines shut off. It's only using one engine all the way down to 40%. That's still too high of a thrust to weight ratio for the Falcon 9 to hover. So it comes in and even at its minimum throttle setting, it's above a one to one thrust to weight ratio. So that means, uh, pardon the fact that this is a Falcon Heavy <clears throat> and it would never land with all three cores, the upper stage and the fairing attached. Um, as it comes down, it is unable to, so say it, it turns on its engines too early and has that minimum throttle and it misses, say it's 50 feet above the ground, it would then start to climb again because it cannot go low enough to actually keep going lower and lower and lower. So SpaceX has to really, really nail their timing um, and their throttle inputs so that they scrub off their velocity at the very last second. And right when they hit zero miles an hour, or zero kilometers an hour, zero velocity, they need to be at zero altitude. If they're at 30 meters or 90 feet, they're falling 30 meters or 90 feet. And that kind of had happened when it ran out of fuel once for, um, I don't remember what mission. But Blue Origin, they don't have to worry about that with their, at least with this uh, new Shepard program. Um, they have plenty of throttle ability. They can throttle that thing all the way down to a very low throttle setting. They can hover, maneuver it around if they need to. Um, it's really cool. Um, they obviously have the the delta v margins, the performance margins to do that as well, because again, they're completing their mission of getting above the Carmen line, and then why not? Who cares if they hover? It it doesn't matter. So, um, yeah. So I I those are my notes from today's launch. I'm still very excited about it. Um, I wish I could go see that one like you can in Florida. It, again, I I want to remind people. If you are ever curious to see a launch live, these aren't tucked away in somewhere secret. This isn't like an Area 51 thing. Uh, when SpaceX launches, they launch right next to Cocoa Beach, which has hundreds of thousands of people in that metropolis area, only an hour away from Orlando as well. Hundreds of thousands of people witness these flights on a weekly basis. So go down there. Go visit. I go down about five times a year. I live in Iowa. Um, it's a lot of fun to go watch a launch. They are awesome. Um... It's a lot of fun. So I encourage you to do that yourself. If you ever are curious, if you ever, I know there's, um, there's definitely this, uh, misinformation from people saying that things are CGI and stuff. You can't project CGI into eyeballs yet that I know of. Um, I get the, I get the, you know, when people, if you watch it online, it, it's crazy. It looks insane and it is. 
And I've been to about a dozen launches, and every time the visceral, the vis- visceral experience of watching a launch live, feeling it, seeing it, it's amazing. Um, it's absolutely incredible, life changing, honestly. Um, especially when at night, that there's something extra emotional about watching one at night. Um, I highly recommend it. I know if you don't live in the United States, it's hard to watch one. Um, but if you live in the United States, make it a priority, guys. Um, make that be your next family vacation to Florida or. Vandenberg has one, but Florida, you know, Florida, they launch all the time. Um, if you have a family, take them to Disney World and then hang out at Cocoa Beach for three days and catch a launch. It's very, 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 very worth it. It's very cool. Um, I have a lot of fun. So, um, oh, also, uh, Matthews, uh, Matthews, uh, Janik, thank you for your donation. Thank you for your tip. And also, say, Skanda, um, can I do a, a live stream of an ISRO launch if I'm free? Most people wouldn't have watched one. I can make it happen. Um, I can absolutely uh, do an ISRO launch in the future uh, as long as they have a good enough, you know, a clean feed for me to be able to uh, live stream myself and as long as I know enough about the launch vehicle, which I might have to read up on their PSLV launch vehicle and a few of their other vehicles and really know a lot about it, uh, I will absolutely do that. I'm a big fan of ISRO. They are awesome, the Indian Space Agency. Um, yeah. So I, I, um, I think that's about to do it for me. I have a few more reminders. Don't forget to check out my new show coming out, guys, on Facebook Watch. It's a series. It's not what I do here. It's totally different. It's ridiculous. A lot of fun experiments, a lot of hands-on things. Very family-friendly. Um, there's a link in the description, facebook.com slash um, spacing out everyday astronaut. You can find it there. It's going to be a lot of fun. I teamed up with people like Amy Shearer Title from Vintage Space, um, Olivia Pavko Giaccia, um, Ben Steinman of Rotor Visuals. A lot of fun people worked on this project. It's really cool. The first episode airs May 4th, so stay tuned. Um, also, make sure you're following me on Instagram and Twitter. Everyday Astronaut, you'll find me. But the important thing is, stay tuned later today. Make sure you have that bell notification turned on because I will be launching a video tonight. Uh, at least U.S. time tonight, so maybe tomorrow morning, first thing for you guys over in Europe or wherever you are, um, stay tuned for that. So, um, yeah, and also huge, 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 huge thank you to my Patreon supporters, especially this last month. In the last, like, six weeks, I've been, you know, we were working on that show so much. <clears throat> I had had really hard time not doing many live streams. Now, you know, it's been almost five weeks or four and a half weeks since I've put out new content on YouTube. So thank you to my Patreon supporters for sticking with me. I understand that uh, I haven't been as active as as I have, but I'm back at it now, back into this, back in the saddle again. A lot of content coming out, so just thank you for your patience and thank you for your ongoing support. If you want to help support, um, and if you want to help, you you know by being on Discord or being in our exclusive subreddit, uh, visit Patreon.com/slash Everyday Astronaut. That stuff means the world to me. Thank you and thanks to all those who tipped as well, including uh, Genius Insider. It'd be cool at some point to just use the booster to land the crew. It will be less weight to have one structure. It would be. Uh, maybe after it's proven itself a thousand out of a thousand times, no problems. Maybe they'll consider doing that. Um, the BFS is planning to land people propulsively like that. So maybe someday, maybe in the future. Great idea and thank you. And Hank, thank you so much, Calder. And Hank's also a Patreon supporter. So thank you so much, Hank. Uh, I appreciate that. I'm glad we got to witness it. Um, I'm really glad we stuck around for it, everyone. And I'm, thank you guys for all watching as well. It really means a lot. Um, tell your friends. If they have questions about space, show on my channel. Hopefully, I can help answer one question at a time. This The videos coming out today and, and later this week about NASA versus SpaceX are awesome. They took me forever to research and really make sure I was doing it right. I really wanted to do this video justice because it's a huge topic. And it's a really important topic. Um, it dances around almost with a little bit of politics, you know, because it's a, a government agency versus a private company and how those two intermesh. So it's a really good video, I promise. Um, I hope you guys learn a lot from it and I hope we all gain some more knowledge together. Um, you guys teach me a lot of stuff, so thank you for your support. Um, I think it's it's time for me to go, guys. I, I would love to land that booster in Kerbal, but next time I am starving. It is time to eat. So thank you guys. Um, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend, a wrap up on your weekend and a great week going forward. Uh, we're coming up on May 4th. Uh, yes, it's going to be awesome. So thank you everybody. Um, thank you for your support. That's gonna do it for me. I'm Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut, bringing space down to earth for everyday people. Goodbye everybody.
I think we all dreamt about going to space when we were kids. But when the space shuttle program ended in 2011, I discovered a void in my life. That emptiness led to a newfound obsession with space. A few years later, I wound up bidding on a Russian spacesuit as a joke. When the box arrived at my doorstep, my friends asked, what are you going to do with a spacesuit? The answer, what can't I do with a spacesuit? That's how Everyday Astronaut was born. Since then, the suit hasn't left my side. It's even gone around the world with me. From remote villages in Myanmar, rockets, and spaceships. To beautiful fields in Norway. I'm fighting a cow to get a picture right now. Here I am on vacation in the beautiful Norway with my beautiful I even proposed to my wife in the suit at Machu Picchu in Peru. These days I've worked with leaders in the space industry to create fun and inspirational content. I've even been invited to different NASA facilities across the country, all for the sake of sharing my excitement with the world. Hey there, it's me, Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. Now, I'm not sure if you're aware, but NASA is doing some incredible This is... This is church for us space nerds. This is where Gene Kranz was sitting when people first came up. This is with permission. I still don't know how. I love that I'm standing on something that says urine bags. This thing's gonna fly like a cat and eat. Whatever that means. That dog's gonna have a sore throat by the end of the day, I'll tell you that. Especially once he tries to explain to his friends that he just saw an astronaut flying majestically through the sky for an hour. This thing has officially become the bane of my existence. Everyday Astronaut's mission is to bring space down to Earth for everyday people. To communicate science through humor and imagination. But most importantly, to spark your curiosity, to want to find your place in the cosmos. Join my adventures as I seek to find out why exploring space is important, inspiring, and quite frankly, really, really neat. Show your support by visiting patreon.com slash everydayastronaut.